Hello, welcome to the Shady Harbor. With me, Little Fox. Playing Slime Rancher once again. Ugh. I've been having a lot of fun with this game, actually. It's a fun game. Alright. So cute. These ones like to attack me. Hey boys. Hello. Hey. Oh, they're all happy. Nice. So cute. Alright. Alrighty then, so basically what I'm doing at the what what I'm up to at the moment is I am just about to start a new chicken enclosure. So I need to get the chimkins. Okay, we've got sea hen and stony hens. I need to find the sea hens and the stony hens. I also need the sea brine and stuff. So we are heading. Hello. Wait, if I suck up some fruit as well. In here, because there's. I believe there's another. Yeah, there's a there's a dude around here somewhere. So if I get a oh, I'll grab I'll grab the fruit from um from base. Pretty fruit. There's also stuff that I need to... hold on. I thought that I could, um, see how many, um, things I need. Oh, oh I've got enough. To feed... I should have enough now to feed the, uh, the cave dweller. Hello. Oh, I need that. I need these. I need deep brine for around um, the water thing. Oh, perfect amount. Hey, bodies. Hey, I needed one of you as well. What is that? Oh, I think it's just a water source of some description. I need to figure out how to open this ship. Maybe shoot stones at it. to do with this thing. It does something. Maybe it's water. Who knows. Whee! Let's... I think there's... Yes, there is one here. From memory, the, they're all, like, pretty close to the side to the edges of this area, so I'm going to look around for them.
It's a very peaceful game though. I do love it. No. Oh no. Ah. ah around. Oh, okay. Oh hey, there's a thing in here. Power chip used at the fabricator to up upgrade the Vax power core. Oh, cool! Hey, where's the sea brown? That should give me ten. Oh, you little shits. Get out of here. Wait. Fuck out of here. Hey! Oh no, that's not. Okay, cool. Oh fuck. Ah! I need to get that friggin' water thing. Okay, I got them all. Good. Or deep sea brand. No Brian, but uh... oh gosh, there's a there's too many of them. Fuck that. Emerald Cyprus. Finding all the secret stuff. But I'm not finding much brine. Heaps of jellystone though. Oh, I found a stony thing there. I need the water thing. Dang it. Very peaceful at least. Oh! Hidden one there. 
Med station. Oh, cool. Hey. the next area to get the next um what's names oh gosh there's a lot of them are there. I think I got them. Maybe? And probably. Now I just need to find those Haha, uh -huh. sucker. Fell into the water. Can't really. How do I. Oh, that's the buttons. Okay. Trying to figure out how to make it bigger and smaller. Smaller and bigger. Oh. Saddle chicken. Oh, wow. that's all. Silky sand. Hey, and it's a meat gordo. Very nice. Hey, based, how are ya? Did you end up installing Slime Rancher? Ooh. 
Ooh. How is it? How is it? Do you like it? Freaking tar slime jump scare right there. I'm gonna find a um not do anything? No. Apparently not. Attacking everything. I don't know how to open those doors. Oh, are you kidding me? Oh, for fuck's sake. Uh -huh. That's some bullshit. Mm. Ooh, power cord at cord two. I made 20 cotton plot. Jetpack. The jetpack I need radiant ore for. But the water tank, I need puddle plots. Damn, where do I get that from? I suppose I can grab some cotton plot while I'm here.
Mm -hmm. ah. hmm. I need. All right, I just want to double check that I've got everything, all the plots that I need in this machine for this machine shing. So, twenty cotton plots. Yeah, slime. It's sliming time. <laughs> slime me up. There we go. So much slime! They need to find the puddle plots now. Pretty well. How are you? Oh, thank you. I need to get some more tattoos. Oh. I'll find out what plot that is. I want I want the super 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 expensive plot. Hells yes. All of the piercing and some that all of the tattoos, yes. Pardon me. Alright, so that's all that fixed. Um now I need to go back out back forth and find the puddle slimes, I guess. I wonder where they are. Puddle slimes and stony hens and the sea hens, so Stony hens and sea hens for now. And if oh, if I can find any of that uh, cool, um, 
ore, ore stuff. I need some of that as well for the jetpack. <laughs> This way. I really do want to know where the um, the one of those the, those stations is on this side on this island, but I need a jetpack before I can even like see the map. So Let's keep an eye out for that um, shiny ore stuff and stony hens. It's a cute name for a thing. Yeah, I'm out of there. I wonder if they just sort of despawn after a while. Ow. 
Hey, shame. What's good? This game. I still haven't found any of that shiny um, ore. Didn't do anything. That's lame. Do not come. Tantalizing first. Nah. can get sand from here now. It's a good place for sand, apparently. Um, normal hands. Where is the- where are the cool hands? I need the good hands. Um, in a date- uh, with it in a date. In a, uh, debate it, with, uh, um, Anna Kasparian. Because he refused to debate anyone and thought, for some reason, uh, Anna Kasparian would be a layup, which is really weird. See you, Chick. Yo, you. Wow. Three of them now. Pew. Now I just want to find that uh, shiny ore. Where the fuck is the shiny ore? I, I found some before. I did. Theatrical Thursdays? Ten of those, I should be able to build something. Chenk and Anna. Ooh, that one doesn't like me. I don't like the fact that I can't find any friggin' ore. Where is the nice shiny ore? I found it, like... I find, found some a while back. Now I can't find any at all. Hey, what the? Don't you fucking dare make me fall. Oh. Wanna fall? Ah, fuck you. Not while I've got the stuff that I need to take home. Short thingy. Give me a sec. Um, smash. Beat. All I want to do is find- Hey! Welcome back! All I want to do right now is find... The... Friggin' Shiny ore thing that I found a while back. Like, which I can't seem to find again. Ooh, hello. Pod. Ugh, no I did not. Wait. Why is he doing interviews? He's... He's currently in fucking court. Oh, fuck's sake. What a dumb fuck.
All right, can any of you see any shiny ore anywhere? Just like shining its way around the place. I mean that that's the um do, do, do. I don't think I can watch Alex Jones on Twitch, can I? Yeah, it's choppy because of the game. I don't there's no way that I can really fix that. It's got to do with um Try that. If that's helping. Yeah, no. Nah. Yeah, it's because of the game. As soon as I tab out, I'm, it's perfect. Like, see? But when I go back in, it, it starts doing it. Oh, is it better? Oh, okay. Oh, honey slime. I already got you. We've got the beets. Where? I can. He doesn't give a fuck. He, he's he's he has a problem. He needs he needs help. Not people like fucking taking advantage of the fact that he has a mental disability. Seriously. I'm not saying that to try and be disparaging towards him. I'm saying like the people that like fucking use him are awful human beings. I am. I mean, like, he's an awful human being, but, like, the people that use him to make money off of him, like, are worse than his, in my opinion. Can you see any shiny shit anywhere? Where are they all? Shouldn't be this hard to find. <laughs> Can't feed him anything. Shame. I don't have anything to feed him with. Ah! Alright, well, I'm gonna head back to the base and try and find a stony hen on the way back. It was weird, I didn't think it was hidden. Is there like a finite amount of these things? Do they not respawn? The other ones respawn. Yeah, so they all they all respawn. I just can't remember where I found the um, shiny ore last time. It's a shame, but at least I can get the silky sand now. Again, 
stock up on the silkiness. Once I get back to safety, I'll bring up that link hoser. Still after me, dang it. That's the map, there. Pro... Pro... Praxis! Ah, pra... 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 Gur? Pra... Gur? Is that what you're trying to spell? Still a bit choppy on the screen. <gasps> That's what I was looking for, by the way. It's full time. Radiant cube. So, radiant cube, I guess, is up here. I wonder if there's any others hiding around. And here. Pretty hard to see in this lighting, honestly. Not surprised I missed it now. Oh, back to... Where I was going. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna need a whole bunch more of those. Feeling the stony ones are around here, maybe. on the other side of the island.
Do you know the way? Ooh, a heart cell. Okay. It's an upgrade component. <clears throat> Maybe it's in the second half of the um, island. Like this way. Oh, found one. Woo! All right. We got him! I just need to find my way back. That way. Whoa! Fuck! I almost lost everything there. It's important to, like, look where you're going in this game. That's alright, the slimes can deal with it by themselves. I'm sure that they'll survive. Build some baits. By Dr. Dre. <clears throat> Alright, what are we looking at here? Oh, what the fuck? Oh, channel five, yeah. All right, I'm gonna get myself something to eat. Um, or snack on. I don't know. Hold on. I'll see if there's anything to snack on. Dave Smith on fascism of vaccine mandates. And you now lose your basic fundamental human freedoms because he doesn't like the decision that you made. I, I, I will say this. If you believe that, that your basic liberties are predicated on the consumption of a product from a giant pharmaceutical company. Your freedom ends? 
where my health and safety begins. You are a fascist. And I mean that to everyone on the panel, everyone listening at home. <laughs> if you believe that someone does not deserve basic liberties no unless they consume a product. Is. No, actually, I do. Yeah, it's kind of the opposite. At the end of the day, done randomly, you're, you're kind of, you've kind of got a point. You've got, you've got, it, you've got it more right than he does. All right, there we go. I should probably, like, put the fruits next to the uh, plots that uh, enjoy them, to be honest. Yeah. Um. Yeah, it, it, like, it's absolute bullshit. None of what, none of what, none of what he's saying is make, it makes any sense at the end of the day. What is Why fascism? don't you define it for me? Yeah, what is fascism? Define it. <laughs> no, we're not going to get into a definitional no, word no, here. No, no, hold on, you just told me I don't... Umberto echoes uh, four, 14, 14 um, uh, signs, I guess, of fascism. It's ironic that he used 14 as the number, to be honest. But, like, um, it's a complicated system of uh, things, but, like... Fascism is effectively a hyper. It's it's a hyper nationalistic um, in group um, of hierarchy. It's a hyper. Uh, it's a yeah. It's a nationalistic in group using hierarchy to justify uh, control over other people. I read that as how many layers of irony are you on my, right now, my dude? Yeah, you don't know what fascism is. is. Which means Let you me do finish. know what it is. Excuse so what is me. It? Since, since I don't know what fascism is, can you tell me how Mussolini defined it? He defined it as a merger between corporation and state. These are not businesses deciding that they don't want customers in. This That's is a really simplistic way of, doing, of, of uh, defining fascism. Yay, all of, all of the stuff. Stony. Stony. the government it telling businesses that they have no choice yeah. this is discrimination under the law and it's yes. interesting that these so-called progressives don't care that this is going to disproportionately affect minorities and immigrants oh all of a sudden that's not an issue right having to show id for voting that's fascism right <laughs> but this isn't a problem uh, i want to bring chris in we've all got of a sudden, 30 seconds i don't know what fascism is Wait, so you said that that it's that that what he said was fascism, like right? basically he's just using that that's just dick writing dictionaries at that point, just using what using a definition that he likes that serves his pur purposes instead of actually like coming to a conclusion about it. That's really all that can be said about it, really. Um like yeah. What else what else can what else can you say really other than yeah, it's uh Ooh, gadgets. No gadgets I can make. Fa fascism basically requires some form some form of um, uh, cultural he hegemony over other people. Um, it requires it doesn't require the merger of it's, it's the merger of state and what did he say the merger of state and um, and uh, government 
because that that just that li that literally just describes government at the end of the day. That's what government is. That's just inclusive of what that that definition just includes whatever you want to include at the end of the day. Fascism is a far right nationalistic um, hierarchy of oppression in which an in group um, declares that it is the right and true inheritors of the the world, basically. It's a really hard thing to. I haven't. I haven't actually like really thought into coming up with a really short and um, concise answer for what is fascism. So, yeah, I'm going to be trying out a lot of things uh, while thinking about it. Yeah, the merger of corporation and state. That's just government. It's just government in the day. So. And you could, yeah, that's such a flexible definition that you could include fucking anything in it. Yo. <laughs> we have any oldies? We have any oldies yet? Oh, we do have some oldies. Hypernationalist conservatism. Yeah, that's basically it. Hypernationalist conservatism. That's what I'm going with now. Do you feel responsible for what happened to the Sandy Hook families? Yes, I killed the children. But beyond that, I mean... No, I mean, I went in that school, I pulled a gun out, and I shot every one of them myself. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm guilty. It's true. No, but I mean, No, no, let's just... Do I feel responsible that someone on... on that played shoot 'em up video games on a bunch of drugs, went and killed a bunch of kids, and then the internet questioned it, and I video covered games. that? They staged Sandy Hook. The evidence is just overwhelming. We've looked at all sides. We played devil's advocate from both sides. No, I don't feel responsible, and I don't apologize anymore. I'm done. Mm -hmm. I don't apologize, I killed the kids. Was there a defendant? I, no, I killed them. I killed them. You didn't kill them. No, I did. No, you didn't. No, everybody said, no, no. I killed them. I killed them. I already admitted, I did it. I killed them. I'm the bad guy. I'm the devil. Get rid of the First Amendment. Can we move on to other topics? I don't think so. I killed them. First Amendment killed them. Sec get rid of the Second Amendment. Get rid of the First Amendment. They're bad. They killed the kids too. George Washington killed them. Jesus killed them. The whole, we should rename the whole planet Sandy Hook. Everything. There should be holidays. We should bow five times a day to, to New Haven, Connecticut for the kids that died. Every American is to blame. Every gun owner is to blame. I'm to blame. We are all guilty. What is, what is, what, what even is your country? Seriously. <laughs> America. I am confused. To Bloomberg and Soros, turn our guns in. Turn our guns Mark in. off with Soros I know, bullshit. I know, I did it. I killed them. I killed them. I killed them. I, I know, I killed them. So I'm done talking about it. Okay. I killed them. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Can we talk about the trial at all? There's nothing to talk about. Yeah. Let me tell you, I don't know if I can do this interview right now. <laughs> Mm. 
You liking it? I don't think you should keep doing that. <laughs> what? Dude, I murdered those children. No. I did. I killed them myself. Still not a funny <laughs> thing to say. I get the point, but it's just like, fuck, man. Fuck it, I don't give a fuck, dude. Right. I'm farming, I don't give a fuck right now. I understand. I understand. Dude, you want to fucking take me out. Right? No, but I'm just saying. They, they really, it wasn't their intention. A jury in the Alex Jones trial ordering the conspiracy theorists to Woohoo! Get the amnesia music playing. Fuck yeah. Pay $45.2 million to parents who lost their six year old son in the Sandy Hook massacre for calling it a hoax. Every sin ever committed on Earth in 10,000 years of history, I did it. The, the, the Night Fucking Stalker, hell. the Zodiac Killer, I did it. Vietnam War, Hitler. I was actually Hitler. It wasn't Hitler, it was me. I did it. I was in a time machine in Germany. I did all that, okay? I did everything. And that's what I accept. So, you're here with the bad guy. You're here with the villain. Lex Luthor, right now. You're talking to him right now. You're talking to Lex Luthor. How's it feel? You don't feel like Lex Luthor to me. I invented cancer. How? I just did it. <laughs> what the fuck? I created death. People didn't die before I was born. I created heartburn. I created hemorrhoids. I created hangovers. I created... I am not fucking joking with you. This is the kind of conversation you would have with inmates in a mental facility. Like, this is... Like, I, I really want to stress that I'm not trying to disparage Alex Jones or mental uh, people with mental illnesses in any way, but, like, this man is not fucking well. <sighs> the people that are enabling him to... to do this are fucking evil. I swear, like, what the fuck? Alright, how many do I have in here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, perfect. Fucking evil bastards. Yeah. It's propped up by people who should fucking know better. He doesn't. I don't think, think he knows might. better. Mm, that's a bad one. I created hair loss. I created, uh... Whoa, man. Acne. Mm. I, I wish created, you could do that one. I created bad breath. So yeah, now, now that we've accepted that. I invented Prozac that Adam Lanza was on. I had his mom buy him the AR-15, give it to him. I was there. Yeah. Did you know that all money in the universe was created by Sandy Hook? It was a time machine. Before the Rothschilds created fractional reserve banking, before tally sticks, before gold coins in the Roman era, it was the Sandy Hook event that created all money future and forward. Yeah. Everything is that. Everything. Well, I mean, how do you feel about like how your attorney did overall? They said I was guilty beforehand because they couldn't have a real trial because they had 24 minutes out of 10 years of me talking about it. Most of them be saying it happened. It's sick. It's disgusting. I was being sarcastic earlier. I didn't kill the children. I'm not Jeffrey Dahmer. I didn't invent hemorrhoids. I simply question things and they're trying to demonize me to say questioning things is a bad deal. Uh, and uh, elementary school massacre, 26 dead, 27 dead now, 18 kids in Connecticut. When you got small children, this really gets to you. That's why the globalists use children's deaths to go after our guns, because they know it gets to us. So don't ever think the globalists that have hijacked this country wouldn't stage something like this. They kill little kids all day, every day. And it's not our government, it's the globalist. I really think they're going to try to come after the guns. It's going to start a civil war. What the fuck? I clearly believe from the evidence. I can't actually, really I can't sit anywhere. Hook, and it's I a real tragedy. Rights. Unfortunately, evidence is beginning to come out. People who've been coached, people who've been given cue cards, people who are behaving like actors. I dropped Billy off and watched him go around the corner. And he never came back, all because of the guns. Won't you just turn your guns in for my son? I mean, folks, we've got video of Anderson Cooper with clear blue screen out there. Nothing oh, yeah. can account for what happens to his nose. Wait, what? Early. <laughs> nothing, nothing. And like, why, why do you do this, Andrew? He just pops in like a fucking random shit like that. Fucking hell. I said, well, they had to have killed somebody. I mean, this doesn't make sense. Then parents come out and start laughing and then turn to the camera and cry. No one died in 2012 in Sandy Hook. Sandy Hook is a synthetic, yes, completely you need psychiatric fake, fucking with help. actors, in my view, manufactured. I couldn't believe it at first. 
I knew they had actors there, clearly, but I thought they killed some real kids. And it just shows how bold they are. People come up to me in hotels and in grocery stores, and I'll be walking my dog, and they just go, the car will go, Rrr! you son of a bitch, quit, leave those kids alone. And I'll be like, I, 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 I never talk about it. Shut alone. up, you son. And some people have confronted me in front of my wife and children and said, you son of a bitch, you killed those kids. No one knows who Adam Lanza is. When you ask somebody about Sandy Hook, it's Alex Jones. Yeah. So I did not kill the children. But do you feel any sense of responsibility for the way the lives of the Sandy Hook families were affected? An emotional day of testimony after three family members whose loved ones were murdered at Sandy Hook Elementary School took the stand describing the harassment they endured as a result of Alex Jones' false statements People were, you know, accusing me of lying, telling me Ben never lived, telling me that I was going to burn in hell and that I would pay for what I had done. Hensel testified that after her husband Jeremy committed suicide in 2019, people went to their daughter Aviel's gravesite looking for evidence the family was faking his death. I couldn't wrap my head around just one more family member being part of this narrative. Uh, you know. It's, a, it's an industry, it's a business. They got $73 million from Remington. Um, they've sued all these different groups of people. So no, I didn't kill their kids. I already said I was sorry before they ever sued me. And now they just attach themselves to my name and who I am. They can get all the judges they want against me. I have hardly any money. All those articles you see, it's like made up. Almost all of it's not even true. You're not, you're not doing too good money-wise right now? I, I never. Um, like they, they had a financial expert in my rigged trial, and he said Infowars is worth 130 million, and Alex Jones is worth 270 million. He was in two movies. I, I don't have two what million dollars fuck? in cash. I don't have stocks and bonds. I don't have, I don't have all that stuff. So it's, it's like a joke. They can have billion dollar verdicts. It doesn't mean anything. So they're, they're expecting you to pay 45 million dollars. It's, it's like 47 million or something like that total. You think that in time you'll be able to do that? Oh, no. It's what's ridiculous. Like, and they have two more trials coming up in Connecticut and in Texas. And everyone's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to get him. Several of the families. They built me up into like I'm that. this giant creature, like all powerful. They like kept State on getting Marshall, dogs. Man. Yeah. And it's none of it's real. So it's like, it's funny, actually. It's actually comical. I mean, it, it's, it's actually hilarious. <laughs> and then the Sandy Hook families, they already got $73 million from Remington. They're sitting there thinking they're about to get this big payday, and it doesn't exist. Yeah. Are you going to be able to keep the studio open? Oh, I mean, I mean, I could do a show anywhere. I mean, they're not going to show anything now. They could run off some of our employees. Yeah. They can shut down some of our people, yeah. uh, which is their big job to shut down America, get rid of American yeah. workers. I mean, that's the, that's the part of the course. But I mean, as long as I don't want to quit or they don't put me in prison, they can't stop anything. Was there a definitive year where big tech really teamed up to deplatform InfoWars? Yeah, it was 2018, early 2018. Bay Area tech giants are taking action against a prominent conspiracy theorist. Twitter gives Alex Jones the boot. Just into CNN, Facebook is purging right-wing conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. Apple, Facebook, Spotify, and YouTube all completely banned Infowars within 12 hours of each other. Facebook said, we have taken it down for glorifying violence and using dehumanizing Crazy. language to describe people who are transgender, Muslim, and immigrants, which violates our hate speech policies. And they had the heads of big tech, so they got together and colluded to shut me down. I knew they had to censor freedom because freedom was so popular. I mean, I knew that was coming, yeah. Freedom is so popular. Audience size. Um, I just think it's let neat. Us have, on average, that freedom. I just think it's neat. Giant viral spread every day, reaching 20, 30 million people. And said it was three, four million people that were hardcore. But then they understood there was censorship, so they were grassroots putting it out. So it actually made it more underground and more avant garde, more black sheep, more rebel, uh, and uh, more outlaw and so made it more successful in a way. What would you do if you had a time machine? You know, I think even though I, I got caught in their Sandy Hook trap and I, and I was covered other people's theories and barely did it, wasn't much of what I did on the, you know, on the timeline, I think I'd do it all again. I think this Fucking is just hell. gonna bring us to something bigger. I mean, technically, if I had it all over to do again, I, I wouldn't have been caught in that trap. Like, this is, this is why they're be, he's being sued into the ground because he just won't stop. And the people like who enable him will not. Oh fuck! Ah, I did a dumb thing. Um, the people who enabled him like will continue to like leech off him to make money off of like his fucking bullshit. 
Like, he's people enable this sh his shit because it makes them money. Yeah, he makes money as well. Yep, cool. But he wouldn't be where he is unless, like, the um, platform... Unless, if he wasn't platformed by fucking YouTube and, like, all of these places that uh, platformed him initially and made money off him until people, like, got really angry at it. And then they fucking did it after it was too fucking late. Hey, boy. Hey, buddy. Eat it. Give me a plot. Let's run off. Plot over. But that's not how the universe works. I did these things, and I'm going with the flow of where I'm at. I did it from a good heart, and I think it'll be turned towards good in the end of the day. So I'm not worried about it. And I believe humanity's going to wake up. I believe we're going to win. What a fucking idiot. Yeah. All right, so we're in uh, Newtown, Connecticut, where the Sandy Hook Elementary School shooting took place around 10 years ago. It's a special week for this town because for the first time ever, Alex Jones is being made to stand trial in Connecticut. In a Connecticut courtroom just 20 miles from Sandy Hook, conspiracy theorist Alex Jones taking the stand, forced to face his own lies. So right now we're on our way to go meet up with a trial attorney named Mark Bankston, who represented the Sandy Hook families in the uh, previous defamation case in Texas. Nobody thinks you killed the kid. Nobody thinks that, Alex. What you did, what you killed... This guy is awesome, by the way. Like, I thought... See, when I first reacted to the... This is the lawyer, by the way. Um, like, he, he's... He's cringe as fuck on the stand. Like, he's so performative, like, uh, in the way that he speaks. But... I, looking into it, and actually I rewatched that interview as well, like, it's... He's been going after Alex Jones for fucking years. And, like, he's been wanting to bring down Alex Jones and, like, people like him. Like, this is what that guy does. Like, he, that's the kind of lawyer he, lawyer he is. Like, when it comes to someone working within the system to try and infect change. This guy is the bastion of that. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. No, like... I don't know why my fly is undone. What the fuck? Is there ability to Slime in everywhere! Control. Look, I'm a parent. And I know my job. My job is to protect my kid. They couldn't be with their kids on December 12th, 2012, right? Like, they couldn't do that. And so when that happened, their job changed. Their job became to protect their kid's legacy. And so every day that this kept going on and they couldn't stop it, these parents are feeling like they're failing their kids over and over and over again. And I put that on Alex Jones more than anybody else in the country. So, for those who don't know, can you describe the extent of the harassment that was experienced by the Sandy Hook families? I, you, there's no way I could do it just sitting here with you. It's unreal. It's initially, you're just yeah, 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 yeah. Contacts. You get no, 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 no. It was worse than that. Done randomly, like he said, he said he he was like saying yelling objection, and the prosecutor said, "Are you objecting to your client or what?" I, I can't tell because Alex kept on answering the questions. <laughs> people who were emailing them, people who'd find out their phone number, call them on the phone. But then you had people starting to show up in Newtown and destroy the memorials they had for their kids. Bro, what the fuck? They had people showing up. <gasps> oh, I just realized something about the game. Sorry to interrupt this. Fuck you, Alex Jones. You're boring. You're old. You're basic. Um, I got a fifth expansion to my thing i i that that wasn't in the first game i don't think i don't think that they had that so like that's that's big that's big that's huge that's that's awesome. <gasps> at, at you know at yeah. their homes knocking on their door they had people going around and talking to their neighbors and then it just kept escalating as as more and more people got caught into the wildness of it there's lucy richards right who was a woman who I have to have some level of sympathy with on on some way because she's mentally ill. But she got obsessed with all these narratives and about Lenny Posner. She was in Central Florida. And when it got disclosed that that's where Lenny had moved to, and InfoWars put up his Boca Raton 
uh, mailbox where he picks up his mail. Well, I've got an article here from a guy I think was our last caller. He's been getting all kinds of grief from Mr. Posner. Social media shut down due to Sandy Hook false copyrights. What's interesting is they list the address for the Honor Network in uh, Boca Raton, Florida, 908 North Dixie Highway. There is no suite, but it's got two different buildings listed that address. Well, we'll just start investigating that. And I guess I'm going to have to probably go on up to New Newtown. I'm going to have to well, probably go investigate Florida as well. She decided, okay, that's my call to action. So she started stalking Lenny and Veronique through Central Florida. She would call and leave these messages, and I don't know if you've ever Did someone say stochastic terrorism? ever heard in a man and and maybe we'll get a hold of them for you or something just so people can understand what this is but creepy did you hide your imaginary son in the attic are you still fucking him you fucking jew bastard look behind you just is coming to you real soon just this awful hateful stuff these slurs and at him and every that don't even make any sense yeah i mean she called him in the n-word and uh, accused him that noah is still alive and that he's got Noah in the attic and sexually assaults him every night. And and even after she was arrested by federal law enforcement, and then she was sentenced um, to federal prison for a short period, uh, part of her conditional release is she cannot access InfoWars. She's just simply not allowed to do that as a condition of her parole. I'm an X-Files kid, you know what I mean? Like, I'm a late 90s conspiracy guy. Man, conspiracy culture used to be fun. It used to not be so malicious and cruel. Area 51... It was fun for me until I realized that um, there was actually worse shit out there in the world, and then it was then it became horrific for me when I discovered that um, all of the conspiracy theories that I used to believe when I was growing up are based on like old, really, really fucking old um, anti-Semitic bullshit. It's always Jewish people. It's always anti-Jewish people. It's always like. It's disgusting. It's absolutely fucking disgusting. Um, yeah. It's it when you realize that that that's that's what you used to believe. Like I never you I because you never heard heard the the deeper layers of these conspiracy theories or like heard about where they came from, um, or who came up with them. It always comes back to the fucking Nazis. It's ridiculous. Even flat Earth theory, like, has it has is based in like Atlantis and like old Himmler fucking conspiracy Nazi fucking conspiracy theory bullshit. <coughs> Sorry, I cho I I I swallowed my own spit. Hey, happy Puritan. Oh, see, that's not conspiracy theories. Those are cryptic. I, those are different. <sighs> Fish-human hybrids. Roswell. <coughs> I mean, it was it was kind of fluffy in its own way. Yeah. Like, it didn't really hit. It didn't really matter at the end of the day what's at Area 51. It was a mystery box we could all have fun with. And there was a time when Alex Jones was hilarious. We just all kind of, like, watched him yeah. when he in his early days. But the moment he started commanding... I, I'll tell you, it goes hand-in-hand hand with the damn supplements. Sick of the globalist eugenicist control freaks adding poison to your water and laughing as you get sick and die? Start purifying your water with ProPure at InfoWars.com. We sell books, videos, t-shirts, high-quality water filters, short radios, cook stoves, survival food of the highest quality. Brain Force sold out in four days. Liver Shield sold out in a week. Prostagard sold out in a month. We have the highest quality nutraceuticals out there, bar none. Yeah. The, the government is going to starve you by the prepackaged food. Yeah. Right? The 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 government has um, <laughs> uh, released radiation into the environment by the iodine. You know, we we were seeing that basically right after the month of Sandy Hook, his traffic went up darn near fifty percent yeah. from all the coverage he was doing that month of the hoax. So that caused them to double down because they've testified on the record. If we see traffic spikes, we try to emulate that. When Alex Jones said the school wasn't an operating school, when he said paramedics never even entered the building, when he said there are pictures of the children who are who they say died who are still alive, he didn't believe that shit. I, I don't believe Alex Jones thinks there's anything fishy about Sandy Hook, but he's going to keep saying it even right now. You know, he's still going to be weird about it. Why? Like, this is the thing, though. Like, the way Alex Jones speaks is exactly the same as that. How? Ooh. A batty slime. Briar hen. Ooh, new shit. Noise. Oh, sorry, I just need to... They're fruit. They like fruit. Yeah, cool. 
Um, <clears throat> uh, this is the uh, the idea of how Mr. Harmful wrote the show. Cough, del, del, del. This is this is the lawyer who is has it, it, is like reaming um, uh, Alex Jones right now. He's the prosecuting lawyer. It's, uh, and uh, it's it's wonderful to see. Like, this is a guy who who he's like you know like I I I will s sniff and and uh, be skeptical about any sort of like person who thinks that affecting change within the system is actually going to be like long lasting. Like at the end of the day, you take down Alex Jones, you're just going to like someone else is just going to step up to like take the place. Um. <clears throat> ooh. Um, Annika Slime, eh? Interesting idea. Where is the Puddle Slime, though? I, I, I'm looking for Puddle Slime. I want a Puddle Slime. Um, like, he's dedicated his career to, like, fucking up the careers of people like, oh my gosh, Batty Boom Boom! Batty Boom. <laughs> so, oh, <gasps> yeah. Gimme, 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 gimme! Oh shit, oh my gosh, is that lava? Is that gonna hurt me if I step on it? What's this? Oh, primordial oil! Yes, I need this, I need that stuff. Uh, these things are very angry at me though. Oh, Annika Slime was the name for Thought Slime. Ha! I get it. Ow! Ow! Stop hurting me! Being mean. Let me get let me get you the cool items. If I can get ten of these. Ooh. Ooh, there's more out there. Sorry. My it's not a matter split. of whether you believe it or not. It's a matter of whether you have carved a groove in your personality that the wheel Lava just goes dust. in that rut now. Aww. I think it would force a moment of ego he's not ready to confront. The InfoWars store is like the main revenue source, yeah? What? I mean it What's up? Sure. Okay. Wait, hold on a sec. Burb. Randomly is there, give me a sec. I'm here. Oh, um, boo. Boo. Oh yeah, that's right. I mean, if I needed to be, I mean, if I, 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 I mean, if I need to, I go to, I, I, mean, I, 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 I go to supporters and, and just get straight donations. Yeah. So uh, how do how do you go about doing that? Just ah. ask them for the money. The jury came in this evening with four point two million dollars. I admitted that I followed disinformation, but not on purpose. I apologize to the families. What I did to those families was wrong, but I didn't do it on purpose. We are so broke but if you don't fund us if you don't buy products at infowarsstore.com we will shut down so get a t-shirt get a book get bodies ultimate turmeric formula get vitamin mineral fusion right, get them all area. at infowarsstore.com and keep us on the air what do you think he deserves oh. at the end of this road um, um to no longer be in public life right like i don't pe people have been like oh you, you're out to destroy alex jones i don't want to destroy him i don't care if he wants to work at safeway or manage a sprint store i don't care I, I feel the right amount of justice is you should <laughs> not be able to commercially market yourself as a public figure anymore. Like you should exit the American stage. That's what I think is the correct result. Or at least, that's what I think is the most utilitarian good result. But the money is not even really the question for me. The, the question is, will this suit be successful at stopping him from being on the national stage? And my worry is, like we said in the courthouses, it won't be, because the cameras will still follow him. Like, he can lose- What? Are we talking about money? We're talking about money and stuff? I've got a, I've got a, I've got a, um, I've got a Patreon. I've got a Patreon. Like, uh, Patreons get call-outs in episodes. You want to be called out? You want me to thank you personally for, like, supporting the show? You can join my Patreon. Yeah. Join my Patreon. Buy me things. Lose all of his money, he gets out there again on the bullhorn, and he starts. Uh, back up. Happy Puritan! Well, I told you I was, I was gonna shut Don't try to you, stop trying to make me vomit. Not happening now. You were gonna shut down Infowars? I was gonna hand it off to the people. Not now. 
It's not a love, labor of love, now it's a labor of war. We need to shut the shit down. So the, so the question is, can this cause of action against Jones on behalf of these parents come to represent something bigger? Is, is it a bigger referendum on the false things he's saying? I hope so, man. I hope so. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? I see me picking my teeth, my enemy's bones. Fucking hell. What a fucking psycho. I'm gonna be feasting on my enemy's bones. Fucking hell. Oh, hello. What's this? I don't think I can pick that up. Yeah, it's silky sand. Learn! Alright, I need to find my way back to the entrance. I mean, like, at that point, like, if, you, if you're going, like, dating someone with a mental illness like that, I don't know. No, that would be a bad joke. I don't know. MTG is a fucking gross human being, so, yeah. Does not want. Uh, Happy Puritan. Like, if you want dominatrixes, you need, you, you need, you need leftists. Leftists are much better. Also, they can fix you. Sex gulag. Mm, yummy. Sounds quite bully. Bully indeed. Whoa, what the fuck? What the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? Wait, what? I tried, I tried to pick up the gold slime and he disappeared. Fucking rude. Asshole. Hello. I need more deep brine, I think, as well. Oh, hey, what's here? You. Oh, I remember it. I still need to find the puddle plot. Got born. Whoa! Holy shit! Hey! -o. Let's get this deep brine in the deep machine. Pew! Oh, I missed. Pew pew. Pew 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 pew. All right. I need batty plots and primordial oil for the power core mark two. This is pulse wave emitter to that pushes away slimes when you need personal space. Oh, that's pretty sick. Boom plots. Phosphor plot. Oh, I can make wait, I can make it? Yeah, I can make the jet hook! Jet hook! Woo!
Still can't make the uh, water tank, but I can do cool shit now. So, I think that this is a good enough time to save and quit. Force firmed! Yes, horny chap, you, horny chat, unite! This is why, this is why the, uh, the, uh, leftist chats are better. Fuck yeah. Alright. Rega owned. Okay. Politics. Updating. Moving into it. Let's do it. <clears throat> alright, 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 alright. Let's find this, uh, this video. Um, I don't know about the Hunter Biden thing. I don't really care about him. <laughs> Lizzo played a flute, apparently, and it's making people go crazy. Alright, what- uh, what is this fucking planet? What is this fucking planet? Um... I spelled Anna wrong. Whoops. Here we go! We ache to have them on our shows. We ache to debate them, but Wait, they won't debate go. us, and they won't come on our shows, and they won't us have us on their shows. I have offered tens of thousands of dollars to any left-wing columnist on the New York Times to debate- <laughs> Sorry, I just love it every time. Every time I hear it, he's just like, every leftist uh, uh, call the New, New York Times columnist this is like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, you fucking weak- Weak man, you weak, weak man. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. I love it. I love it. We love it. Me anywhere they want. They could choose the moderator. They could choose the audience mm -hmm. and serious money. Joining us now is Dennis Prager, the man you just saw in that video. And Dennis, uh, I guess you could call TYT a cinnamon because uh, we don't want you to ache. Want to make sure we give you an opportunity to feel good uh, by debating well, someone on I, the left. Funny, I, I was thinking, if only you were a New York Times columnist, how much money you'd be making now. <laughs> well, I'm a little more honest than a New York Times columnist, so uh, this will be a great conversation. Thank you for doing it. So yeah, I to, uh, yeah, I'm just like, hmm, okay, communists. My pleasure. So I wanted to just. So, like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask for this this very specific thing that no that 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 doesn't exist, and then like, haha, nobody wants to debate me. And to start off with, I guess disagreeing with the notion that the left is afraid to have these kinds of discussions or debates. In fact, you had tweeted that video that we started this conversation with, and there were a lot of responses from prominent individuals on the left. I wanna give you a few examples, starting with Vosh, who's a big Twitch streamer. He's got a big YouTube channel as well. He says, you couldn't be more wrong. I love spirited debate in the free marketplace of ideas. He even provided his- Well, I mean, I guess that it, but, but, but Vosh, Vosh, isn't your area of expert expertise um, just calling, uh, just just implying that all of the black people that you're talking to want to uh, kill the white race, isn't that isn't that it? Isn't it just like Vosh is just leftist um, white replacement? Like <laughs> it's not really like you. You probably have more things in co he probably has more things in common than Prager than he does with leftists. Honestly, email and would love to have that conversation with you. My good friend Ben Burgess also responded. He's a great guy. He says. Hi, Dennis. Uh, I'd be delighted to chat with you either on my show or you could host it through PragerU or I'm sure Modern Day Debate or some other neutral platform would be happy to host it. And on multiple occasions, I noticed that Sam Cedar would also love to debate you. So he responded in that tweet as well saying available and adding uh, Tim Pool knows what lengths he would go to to not even be on the same stage as me, right Tim? Uh, so there's some drama with uh, Tim Pool, but just wanted to let you know, you're you don't have to ache anymore. There are lots of people on the left. Oh who yeah, isn't Tim Pool speaking a confirmed speaker at the um, the Toilet Paper USA conference or something? 
He's not even pretending at this point. I to debate you. Oh, I have no doubt that there are a lot of people on the left. The, uh, the, the issue that I raised <laughs> was people at the New York Times and people like you, for, the, for example, you pleasantly surprised me by doing this, to be perfectly honest. And by she's the way, a, I think proof of my Times. theory is a piece that I read on some uh, left wing or progressive site just today about how angry many of your viewers are that you're having me on. Whereas I will tell you, I would get no such feedback from the right if I had a left per, a left wing person on my show. They would be thrilled. So uh, I, I still stand by my belief that in general, uh, the people certainly in the higher echelons of the left don't want to debate. But it's, it's uh, you know, it's probably not worth debating. By higher echelons, what is he talking about? Debating whether there would be such a debate. I presume we're having one now. Yes. And oh, yes. I already know about well, that. Well, look, uh, the left that's, is that's, a monolith. That's a good article, There's a lot of disagreement shame. on the left. Uh, there's certainly a lot of disagreement on things that I say on this show yeah. on various issues. I know, issues, I have. Even when it comes to crime. Um, I'm sure you've noticed some of the backlash I've received in that regard as well. However, I will say there is a reason why the right wing tends to be more open to having these kinds of discussions and debates and the left wing gets a little uneasy about it. And it's because there has been this prevalence of prominent figures who identify as the left, right, or on the left, who then later start to, you know, cozy up to right wing figures, and then it turns out that they completely move to the right wing because they're essentially paid to do it. They're used as tools by the right wing to essentially spew right wing talking points while purporting to still be on the left. In fact, Dave Rubin's a great example of that. Dave Rubin used to work with us. Was Dave Rubin ever on the fucking left? He just seemed like a stupid lib to me. He identified as someone on the left. Well, he, Dave, Dave, yeah, go ahead. Forgive me, Adam. Dave Rubin made a video for PragerU why I left the left. Oh, I know. I, I he, he does not, in fact, state to the world that he's still on the left. He I, I don't know who you have in mind, so I, I can only address the one name that you gave. Dave Rubin acknowledges he's not on the left. It's interesting because if I recall correctly, you had a conversation with Dave Rubin and how incredibly important it was that he was engaging in these discussions with you, discussions with the right wing. And you stated something very specific. I actually wanna to go to that video and I wanna get your thoughts. Maybe you can elaborate on what you meant in this video. Let's watch. I want you to continue to say you're, you're a liberal <laughs> because you're, yeah. you're of great use uh, to, to good values. Well, don't worry, I'm not doing it for, my, for your use no, of me. I'm doing, I'm doing I it for myself. No, I no, you. no, no. Yeah. It's like Christians who say to me, you know, oh, we would love you to come to Christ, but you are so valuable to us as a Jew when you defend us Christians. Yeah. And they're right. You are valuable in the best sense of the word because the America needs people who are clearly a, 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 a liberal and who, and to be honest, and fall into the category of kosher as gay yeah. to say, hey, hello, the conservatives are not hate mongers. Hello, they should be heard. And maybe every so often you should read National Review right. or watch a PragerU video. So Mr. Prager, you can understand why members of the left would feel a little uneasy when these discussions take place because usually it's a sign that someone on the left got lured in with some billionaire cash like Dave Rubin did. Oh, okay, well, see, well, that's an unfair statement. I, I don't accuse people on the left of having their positions because of money. And I don't think you should do that with regard to conservatives. Uh, Alan Dershowitz is, is, is not a right winger, but Alan Dershowitz has said to me, this Harvard professor is very well known. He's lost all his friends because he, he defended Donald Trump in court. He didn't even vote for Donald Trump. Just merely defending his right to have a defense was enough for him to lose his friends. The, the assumption on the left is that if you're a conservative, you're a despicable human being. And th this is a perfect example. The only reason Dave Rubin would have done it was, was for money. Uh, I don't know anybody on my side of the spectrum who holds their positions because of money. But like, there's like, 
th there's there's entire fucking CPACs um, and like lobbying organizations devoted to spreading like conservative fucking politics in order to like retain their wealth. That's just not true. You can just see it. Holy fucking hell. Uh, there's a hell of a lot more money on the left anyway. Really? If you want to get really? money. Really? Oh, how, how is yeah, PragerU funded? Who bought funded? the Washington Post? How is PragerU funded? Who bought the funded? Washington Post? Rich donors. By, by, by people on the internet and by wealthy donors. But uh, Prager, Prager, <laughs> Prager U does the, is, is pittance compared to the money that is available just to BLM. Uh, well, how, much, how much money was given to Black Lives Matter? Uh, by the Ford not by billionaire the donors. They Trump. certainly received quite a bit of money oh. from individ individuals who no, wanted no, to donate they, they to that cause. Okay. But if you think right. there's a People. lot of money on the left, I mean, you would be mistaken. But there I do want to move lot. off oh, this oh. because there are actual wait, wait, topics, no, 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 no. issues that are worth why. discussing. The, the richest, the richest zip codes vote Democrat. Mm -hmm. The wealth today in America is 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 disproportionately for uh, on behalf of Democrats and the left wing. That's either a fact or not. Anybody could look it up. There's a difference between voters in wealthy parts of the country and who who Maybe. ends up serving as donors, both for politicians, corporate politicians, of course, and for right wing media. If you think left wing media okay. has major billionaire donors, again, you'd sadly be mistaken. But the information regarding Prager U, which by the way, hey. you're listed as an organization that's tax exempt, correct? And you're not supposed to be talking about political issues. But last time I checked, Prager U yeah. talks about a lot of political issues. Well, then you haven't checked in a long time. Uh, for example, we, we never did a single video on Donald Trump. And that's not exactly political. Uh, we just did a, uh, uh, we put out a video a week. So we have 500 videos out about and- uh, I, I honestly just think that he's uh, like a conservative who like who like, likes money, honestly. I don't think that he's legit in any way, honestly. Web server is disabled. What the fuck? Sorry, I was trying to open something. Uh, we just put out one on Millard Fillmore. If you consider that political, Riveting. most yeah. people never heard of it. We're doing every single president. Many of our videos, probably at least half, are purely educational. Ah! <laughs> All right, so we've seen a couple of those videos and they are anything but educational. The only thing that they are educational of is of just how low um, people like Dennis Frager will go to try and lie and rewrite history. It's it's insane. I'll tell you about every president, for example, Democrat or Republican, by some noted historian. Uh, it's a caricature of of Prager U. You no no actually no like when when he goes to do history he doesn't actually use historians. Like I, he may have done it like in they, they may have had historians in videos but they tend to use um, other kinds of uh, other kinds of uh, people to do history um, videos like the kinds of people who don't actually uh, study those fields. Um, it's really interesting. Like they rarely actually have anyone on who actually talks about the field that they're um, uh, they, they've studied in. Uh, it's really interesting. You should go through their videos and have a look at it. Uh, for you to say that we are largely political. Prager it U describes not. itself as conservative, like it's a yes, conservative take, conservative, which okay. by the nature of if, it being conservative is political. Yeah. But listen, it is what it is. No, no, I, no, I do wait, want wait, to wait, move on wait, to other issues wait, because there are actual know, political make, issues wait, that you're here to discuss. With all, you can't make a point and then not let me respond. Okay, Forgive go ahead. me. Yes, you can be conservative, <laughs> for example, socially and not specifically. Po politically generally means vote Republican. We don't tell people to vote anyway. In any in any direction. No, that's that's but not yet, what politics is. <laughs> what a fucking weasel. We do believe that America is the finest country ever founded. If that makes us political, we're political. Okay, the political. So yes. I want to move on to other 
statements you've made, other issues. You know, you do focus on culture war related issues, uh, your distaste, hatred for secularism. I want to start off without putting words in your mouth, to show a video of something you said just yesterday on the uh, Dennis Prager show that I thought was fascinating. So let's take a look at that and we'll discuss. The computer sticker phenomenon is crazy. It was actually one of the biggest what, shocks. What does I that had. mean? What does that mean? On your computer right here, people instead of just having a, a blank. Oh, back, I see. They would Except messages. On, yes, it would either and be. And what was the common message? I heart women, or um, just the the female sign. You know, the circle and Wait, the arrow. Wait, I heart women on a woman's computer. Yes. All of this is proof to me that women need men. These women are manless. They may have hookups, but they're manless. And manless. they might have been fatherless too. Ending with my generation, oh, the I manless say, women. With the, the baby boomers, but on t certainly through then, a young woman thought a lot about do I have a boyfriend? Mm -hmm. What will my wedding be like? What will I wear? Who will be there? Who will the guy be? That is. That, I believe, is healthy and normal for a young woman. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. Yeah. That has been knocked out by by the the feminist left. And if you think about it, you're 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 a weak female. What? So fascinating statements there. Uh, you seem to believe that women who love themselves who feel confident about being women tend to be manless and lonely. Do you genuinely think that? Do you think I'm manless well, and lonely? I, I, was, I, I think I women that, rock. I said that in general, women need men. And I've said a thousand times that in general, men need women. The fact that that's controversial is a statement about what's happened to our culture. But you got triggered by a story about women who have laptop stickers that just say positive things about women. You immediate, your well, mind immediately I, went to, they might have daddy issues and they're lonely, they need men. I wanna yeah. understand your thinking. Like okay, what, how, no, do, no, how do you get to that, that. conclusion? Uh, it's, it's, if you had a, a heterosexual man, with 97% of men are heterosexual, with a sticker, I love men, you, you, would, you would wonder why. Why don't men have stickers, I love men, but you think it's perfectly normal and, and a non-issue that women would have stickers, I love women. What, what is the point of, of saying that? The, the, it is worthy of a question. What, and I don't think that 50 years ago, this would have been, obviously there were no laptops then, but I don't think it would have been a common sentiment. I don't understand why women would need to announce I love women if they're not a gay woman. You tell me, I'm curious. What, is, what does yeah. that signify? Well, I mean, listen, as an individual who values free speech and freedom of expression, I think that women and men can have whatever laptop stickers they want. And so uh, the I. reason why but there I'm is a difference between those. men and women in regard to those laptop stickers is because, I mean, when you really think about it, women didn't have the right to vote for a very long time. Women didn't even have the ability to apply for a credit card until the 1970s. There have been equality issues when it comes to men and women. Now, we're, we're getting a lot better, that's for sure. But first of all, I don't agree that women have laptop stickers that just simply say, I love women. It's probably some sort okay, of empowering statement. It's so hard to find a place to like justify that. This and react to because I'm just so like blown away by like why I'm just trying to understand why he has an issue with like women having stickers that say I love women on them. Like, I didn't even know this was a trend, I didn't even know this was a thing. Um, and like, I'm not inclined to believe that it was a thing because they tend to just lie and uh, lie about these things. It's just like so much. I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start with this because I don't really want to find. I don't really want to like talk about it as if it's a real thing because, like, what if it's not? I don't really want to bother trying to find out if it's a real thing because where do I even fucking start with that? What What is the fucking issue here? But that doesn't mean that doesn't translate to 
oh, I'm a lonely, manless person, well, and I should enough. go back to the good old days when women sat around thinking about whether or not they're gonna find a husband and get married. You seem well, to why, why push you, your okay, values you, and you, your views married. on relationships onto other people. And what I'm trying to get you to understand- See, what I really like about her is she talks over him. Like, yeah, you, you don't have to show any respect to these people. They don't deserve respect. Um, you're not going to win points with people by giving people respect. The kind of people who like are into um, into the whole uh, debate culture, good faith, bad faith, uh, optics bullshit, uh, those kinds of people aren't actually going to support you anyway. Um, they might give you money or something, but that, that's about it. Um, but that, but at the end of the day, if you talk over a fucking idiot like Tennis Prager and tell your audience how shit they are, uh, that's much better praxis than giving him time to speak and like understand and like saying, oh yes, we need, we just need to work together to understand these, the, these issues. Uh, you know, we can, you know, uh, we can look about across both aisles. Oh my gosh. Like what was I watching or listening to the other day? I can't remember who it was, but the idea that... The idea that people are need to look across the aisle when it comes to these problems, like you know how Biden's just like, oh yeah, we need to we need to work together with the good Republicans. That's basically throwing yes, Innuendo Studios. Yeah, Innuendo Studios did a really good vi video um, recently. Maybe we should watch it on on stream, like. But um, yeah, talking about how. Um, that's some of the reason why people hate her. Yeah, and that's the thing: the people that hate her, right? They wouldn't have been. They would. They. They. They just don't care enough about uh, leftist causes. In my. In my opinion, they care more about optics than they do about praxis. When you allow hateful people to speak, and you like don't make them look ridiculous, and you treat them like fucking equals, um, that doesn't help your cause. You need to find like minds, not change minds, because you can't change minds. Stand is rather than making generalizations about what's best for women, maybe allow women, allow people to live their lives as they see fit, have a belief system right. as they so, see fit. Okay. Why do you feel the so need I to have... force your beliefs onto other people? Well, Go ahead. Well, first of all, okay, I don't understand the word force. I the, mean, the fact that you think that if I offer my opinion, I'm forcing people to adopt it is a bit odd. You don't believe that making, America I, should be secular. So what does wait, that wait, mean? Wait, 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 wait. L let me finish that point. Sure, go ahead. I believe that I have the right <laughs> as you do to offer people thoughts on what might be a better and happier life for them. I've written a book on happiness, which which uh, has a touch. And it's also written a couple of articles on how to uh, What's the word? How 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 to uh, coerce, uh, encourage your wife to uh, have sex with you w when she's not in the mood? Let's have a look at this. Actually, uh, this 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 would be like fucking pretty funny shit uh, to just look at when she's not in the mood. Not in the mood when she's not in the mood. And that's Prager. When a woman isn't in the mood, part one. And when a woman isn't in the mood, part two. Do not come, do not come. <laughs> Given our preoccupation with politics and economics, it's easy to forget that for most of us, micro issues still play a great role in our lives. So here are some thoughts that, as heretical as they might sound, have been found extremely helpful, sometimes even marriage saving. From listeners to my radio show, which features a male female hour every week, the subject is one of the most common problems that besets marriages. The wife who is not in the mood, and consequently frustrated, and and the and the consequently frustrated and hurt husband. 
There are marriages with the opposite problem, a wife who is frustrated and hurt because her husband is rarely in the mood, but as important and as destructive as that problem is, it has different causes and different solutions and is therefore not addressed here. What is addressed is the far more common problem of he wants, she doesn't want. It is an axiom of contemporary marital life that if a wife is not in the mood, she need not have sex with her husband. Here are some arguments why a woman who loves her husband might want to rethink this axiom. Holy fuck. Okay. So, we're gonna go in- so, so, so he's, he's written two articles about how to coerce women into sleeping with you. Which, um... That's rape. Consent is always informed and enthusiastic. If you have to convince someone to sleep with you for any reason, that is sexual assault. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Holy fuck. Hold on. I need a quick, I need a quick uh, toilet break. I'm really sorry to do this right in the middle of uh, reading out this amazing article. Um... Like, I'll definitely, uh, this is a long article, but, like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I'm gonna have to watch, read that out later, but, um, yeah, we need to go, yeah, it's abusive ship. That's abusive and rapey ship. Um, but I am gonna take a quick break, so don't go anywhere, or do. Um, either way, though, I will be back, and I'm gonna be placing, playing some Wolfenstein while we look at, w watch the rest of this video. And we're back. Wait a second. Horny chat is amazing. Just a lot of lives if one wants to read the reviews on Amazon. I believe, again, that in general, of course, every generalization has exceptions. Most women will have a better and happier. Oh, uh, shit. Still got a minute and 38 seconds. All right, well, I'm going to get started in this while that's happening then. Da 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 da. 
Now, if you want to uh, to skip the ads and watch the back so soon thing while I do my lady business, um, you can always uh, subscribe to the channel with a either a normal subscription, which has various prices depending on the country that you're in, or you can use your Twitch Prime subscription, which you can do by linking your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. You get one free Twitch Prime subscription a month for your favorite streamer. Yes. Oh, yeah. Aha. Resume. I'm not the best at this game, so. Alright, so I need to sneak into the... Okay! I died <laughs> immediately! I did run the net. I already ran the ad. I already ran the ad. We've got 23 seconds left in it. Why I'm spending too much. That's why I'm waiting until that was you. Okay. I don't remember what what part of the game I'm in. Oh wait, there's heaps of. Do I have guns? No. Gun no. Oh. How do I change my weapons? I've forgotten all the buttons in this game. Nope. Anyway, why am I holding it like that? I gotta hold it like this. This is how you really do it. Alright, let's continue our your life with a good man, and most men will have a happier and better life with a good woman. I don't know why that is controversial to state. All I know is that having adopted the view that career is more important than marriage has led to more depressed women than anything that preceded it. There are more young women today depressed than at any time in American history. This is in the New York Times. This is not from a right wing source. I think feminism has made women more miserable than happy. So I'm gonna address that in just a second, but I want to address what you said That's prior so to that hilarious. very quickly. So listen. I don't have a problem with someone saying women are likely to be happier in life if they find a partner to share their life with. I don't think that that's a controversial statement. What is controversial is you seeming to imply that feeling confident or supportive well, toward women and being happy single or in a relationship that it's mutually exclusive. Like you can't be supportive of women and have a happy life. Like the weird connection that you tried to make there makes no sense. What was yeah. the final well, thing that you I, said? I, I speaking of so like this is the thing, this is the thing. He thinks that like feminism is just bad. For the sake of it being bad and just making people unhappy. But And then he moves on to that, to the idea that, um, and then he moves on to, to, to a weird ass fucking idea where if, if, extrapolating from the fact that feminism is bad without having actually proved that in the first place, like... Okay, dude. Step. Depicts Dennis Prager as some sort of, sort of lich. Yeah. A laser cutter? Fuck yeah. How do I recharge it? Dun, dun. Uh, the... the the depression among yes. women in today's time. That's yeah. a great point. And you know what? That's right. Uh, there's actually increasing rates of depression and anxiety among men and women. I think that's important to point out. And you are concluding that it's because of, I, I guess, the breakdown of the traditional family is that and that's people right. who I remain think it's single. I think I think that the belief that many young women have that they, they, if they find a man, that's a great thing. But the thing that will really bring them joy in life is career has, has misled massive numbers of women into a less happy life. Career is not as terrific as the, uh, the feminists portrayed. What is this, what is this between, between the, 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 
What is this between like um th this weird juxtaposition between like being a housewife and having a career as as the only two options for a woman to have? That's so fucking weird. Can't can't a woman be like an amazing sexy beast and get like and just just like have money from doing that? Or maybe we can like get money out of the equation entirely. That would be nice. I think. I th I think anyway. And cut fences. Oh, okay. What? Did... Oh, what? That's a so cool. Ah, the structured environments are the best. Shroud wife stuff. Like, yeah. But what if that's your job? And also, like, what if being a trad wife is your career, and you like always trying to get better at the at it as as a career trad wife woman? Like, you think that like taking care of of um, maybe one, maybe even more human beings isn't a fucking job? I mean, like, what the fuck? So weird. The joy available for most women with a good husband and making a family is not is incomparably more than from a career. Have you considered some of the economic issues within this country that don't really give women a choice as to whether or not they should yes, focus on a that, career? That's a very real issue. I fully acknowledge that. That if you don't have a career to fall back on and there's a divorce, uh, that that you're entirely right. That is not the same thing as saying career is going to give you a great deal of meaning and happiness like a marriage will. You're entirely right. Economically speaking, there is value in having a fallback career. I fully acknowledge that. But it goes, I'm going further than that because the idea that a family can live in a single income household today is laughable. That is incredibly difficult well, to do. And so while the right wing see, and, and you yourself seem to have this idea that, well, you know, Women should focus on marriage, they should focus on building a family. First of all, you can't force anyone to do that, right? But let's say you want to encourage women to focus on that. You wanna give them the choice, but you wanna encourage them. A great way to encourage them is to create an economic system in which people feel comfortable knowing that they can survive on a single income household. I'm talking about when they're married, okay? both. Individuals in a marriage have to work in order to be able to pay their rent, pay their mortgage, put food on the table for their children, educate their children. Wages have remained stagnant since the 1970s. Women don't have a choice as to whether or not they can work or whether or not they should just focus on raising children. They don't have the choice. That's the point I'm trying to make. Right, and we differ on that because the the reason that many women, not all, but perhaps most even, are are working is not just economic, especially in the certainly in the upper class, upper middle class. But the, the women were brought into the workplace because the um, the amount of production, when compared to GDP growth, was like stagnating, um, and they were trying to avoid a and capitalists were trying to avoid an, another Great Depression, like. It was the necessity of production um, value under a capitalist society, which 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 caused women to go into the home and work. It wasn't like feminists were more like, hey, you know, can we be treated better um, in these areas rather than I want to work in the same job as a man? Like, this is this weird straw man which I've heard like over and over and over again, like, as if, me like, th these anti-feminists would be like, oh, you think a woman can do exactly the same thing as a man? And I'm just like, I'm not even talking about that shit. Uh, like, I, I don't care about uh, whether, like, comparing people's strength to each other and any of that stuff. I don't care. I don't. I do not care. Uh, yeah, pregnancies don't go off topic voluntarily, by the way. Yeah. It's just a weird straw man. Like, when was the last time you heard, like, someone who is not an anti-feminist bring up that talking point? Have you ever heard a feminist talking about that shit? Uh, other than responding to a anti-feminist? I, I doubt it. 
like Dennis Prager is talking about is is literally just strawmanning feminism. Like he's talking about a type of feminism which never existed in the first place. So yeah, it kind of crumbles his entire argument from the from the get go. And even part of the middle class, it is because they believe that their self worth derives more from work than it does from family. If a girl got up at a in a high school or college class, let's say a, a professor or a teacher said, so uh, women, I mean, to the extent that they can now say that, because you can't say boys and girls in many elementary schools, because we're I told know. by your side that sex is not by, binary. But let's say they your, say we'd like- Your side, or oh, wait, like, can I, oh good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, that's that's just bullshit. He's brought up a bunch of other straw men, like instead of like coming up with his argument. And this is the thing, like because he doesn't have anything to actually add to the conversation, all he can do is attack um, this straw man left that he believes in instead of actually coming up with an argument over why conservatism is a good idea. Like the women in this class, please stand up and tell us what your your vision yeah. for your life is. If a girl got up in a college class. Oh, fuck. Son of a bitch. I have no audio, by the way. Yeah, it's just trad wife shit. Oh, it's doing that thing. These are quite old, so. Now we're back online. I can hear shit. Need to charge. Let's go. Let's go eat. And said, you know, to be honest, my greatest hope in life is for a good marriage and to make a family. She would be regarded as almost a freak. Would she? I mean, you, what is that based on? Yes, what evidence would. do you have? Like, yeah, like, again, that's exactly what I'd say. There is no evidence. He has no evidence. He's just like moralizing and saying, "Oh, this is what the this is what I believe feminism to be. Uh, therefore, this is this is what uh, the truth is." And it's just act extrapolating from bad fucking conclusions from the start. And uh, where the fuck am I supposed to be going? Hmm, I have to back that up. I, I live in the real world. So do uh, I. There is okay, and you believe that if a girl got up and said that she would be regarded with the same respect as the girl who said, I'd, I'd like to be a physicist. I yes. believe that most normal people are too busy thinking about how they need to survive and are less concerned about the aspirations of individuals in the- Gosh, that's a really good point. That's a really good point. At the end of the day, like Prager is coming from such a privileged, uh, privileged uh, point of view where he doesn't have to think about like the basic survivability. Sorry, something's happening in the game. Going home and I'm sending the prisoners back to Eisenwald. The bus rolled up a few minutes ago. Ulla, Ulla, answer me. This guy's so angry. Shit. Their classroom. And so, if you have data backing up that women who want to be homemakers are 
persecuted in this country. I'd love to see that data. Persecuted. And I wouldn't agree I with that I persecution. Never said they're you All uh, I seem said to was imply that they're being they victimized be by wanting to be homemakers, and I just don't buy it. Okay, fine, so good. This is a classic example of what I say on my radio show. I prefer clarity to agreement. You think that a girl who got up in a college class and said my my, fer, my most fervent dream is to have a happy marriage and a family will be regarded. Honestly, that person will probably be bullied just for saying something weird in class. Um, hun, Karen, Karen, this is compu computational mathematics, like cool. Okay, go get married. With the same respect as a girl who said, I would like to be a physician or a physicist. We yes. differ. Perfect. Okay. All right. I, and again, if you have data. At least from people on the left, they'd get the same amount of respect. But like from people on the right, um, people like Dennis Prager, Prager that, that you, either way, they would get less respect. If they marry, if she went up, went and ended up marrying a piece of shit like Pre De Dennis Prager, like she ain't gonna get any. She's she ain't gonna get more respect. Like this is just utter projection from from him. At the end of the day, this is what he how he would like to treat women. He wants women to be. Um, Um, he wants women to be a, uh, to be trad housewives and to have less respect, but he's projecting that onto, uh, what, uh, leftists do at the end of the day. He's, th he's saying, oh, well, that's what I would think. I, I would treat women with, with less respect. <laughs> Honestly, like the, the, le the, the conservative trad wife, um, would get less respect than the leftist, um, uh, physicist. Just because of the environment, different environments that they're in. If you're going to be around conservatives, you're going to get less respect as a woman. That's just the truth. Can I like kill this guy? Yeah. Backing up what you're saying, then I'm happy to admit well, I'm it wrong. Mean data? We, the teachers don't do this and, and then send it to a computer. So we, you're just declaring, you're declaring, you're making up stories about how women are no, treated no, 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 in the classroom they, and we're just supposed to buy it? Okay. You, we're, we're each giving the perception of reality that we have. Not every perception of reality has a database. Otherwise, you're, one is a functional moron if one cannot make conclusions about life without data. Okay, all right. So let's move on to uh, right wing violence. Following the Buffalo supermarket shooting, which of course was inspired by a belief in a conspiracy theory that whites are being replaced with minorities in this country purposely to keep Democrats in power. Uh, you felt the need to kind of downplay right wing extremism in this country. And you said, quote, this man represents such an infinitesimally small segment of the white population. Now, while that statement might be literally true, I don't think that the white population in America mostly consists of domestic terrorists, so I agree with you on that. It seems like you kind of want to brush aside the very real problem we're having in this country with political violence, politically motivated violence. And I want to give you a few other examples. For instance, the Southern Poverty Law Center did a poll and found that seven out of 10 Republican voters believe in that white replacement conspiracy theory. Are you concerned about that at all? Right now we have had, I believe, two million illegal immigrants and the Democratic- So he's not gonna answer directly. All right, we're gonna have to extrapolate here, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, we're not going to be able to get get him into a yes, no. Um, although he is dumb, he might do that later. But he's going to talk about, he's going to put the dots there on the page and expect us to draw the lines between it so it doesn't look like he's saying that he believes in the white replacement um, theory, which is a debunked conspiracy theory. 
uh, which says that within one generation, um, the demographic, the white people in America will be replaced by minorities, um, and that this is all a plan by rich Jewish bankers. Like that is what the white white replace the great replacement um, conspiracy theory is. Now we can talk about demographic change, but at the end of the day, even then, when it comes down to um, demographic change. Demographic change being a bad thing is only a bad thing if you're a racist. That's it. That's just it. There is no other downside to demographic change, which is not just simply a side effect of population growth. It's just a... yeah. Like, you're just a racist at the end of the day. I, I, I don't... there's no other way to really describe it going further into it and trying to debunk the uh, it, the smaller points in the theory is pointless because it is a debunked crazy anti-semitic conspiracy theory otherwise demographic change does not really matter what matters is how you treat people uh, who are immigrating to your country if you treat them with respect they will integrate if you treat them like shit they will create their own enclaves that's what we know about things. Um, yeah, that's it. That's it. At the end of the day, you get what you deserve. President of the United States has opened our border. It, it was, there was attempt to close the border to illegal immigration. So I will ask you, and I, I mean. Asylum seekers, it's not illegal immigration. I, I'm so sick of them saying, talking about, um, they're talking about people who are uh, asylum seeking as as illegal immigration. It's it's disgusting and racist. It's just a racist dog whistle. Like, don't. It's not illegal to seek asylum in a another country, especially not when you're going from a company from from a country which which whose resources and uh, your and livelihoods have been um, raped and destroyed by Western countries uh, to enrich those Western countries. Uh, if you go there to try and, you know, survive and maybe get back some of that wealth, then that's only justice to me. This is not even as a challenge. I'm curious. Exactly. Why do you think people on the left want millions of people to come in legally or illegally? Well, because I want people to be able to immigrate. I, I guess I, I, I guess. <laughs> good one. Good one. Good one seventh. Um, I, I guess I just believe in freedom more than Dennis Prager does, which is kind of funny because, like, I'm, I'm like the idea of freedoms um, is something that I scoff at. Let's first discuss uh, the inaccuracies in your statement. Number one, oh, there yeah. is, there are legal means to immigrate into the United States. So, for instance, the asylum seekers who are being used as political pawns. By people like okay. uh, Texas Governor right. Greg Abbott, I'm not done, Ooh, yeah. or Florida's Governor Ron DeSantis. They came. See, that is really good. You don't let people interrupt. I'm not done. Like she's so fucking good at that. Into I this love country that. seeking asylum, meaning they are here legally and they are awaiting a federal judge, a, an immigration judge, okay. to make a decision. Happy Puritan. Um, he, he's talking about um, um, uh, Anita Sarkeesian about their asylum status. Okay, right. so, so the idea so that the border that the is millions, open and wait, people are just millions? pouring in illegally is inaccurate. Yes, no, it is accurate. No, it's okay, inaccurate. Good. So this yeah. perfect example. Uh, again, again that, 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 that is a lie told by the right, like the people pouring over the border, borders is just not the truth of the matter. It, it's really not. It's a lie they tell here in Australia as well. They're all coming in on boats. No, they're coming in on planes. Of oh, I thought you were joking. <laughs> we differ and there's no reconciling. Either you're right or I'm right. Either millions are coming in illegally 
but whom you are calling legal because they're all seeking asylum. Do I hear you correctly? We have this a system a in place for asylum legal. seekers. So you have a you have a shitty system there for side, asylum seekers, basically. You have a shitty seek system for asylum seekers, um, and yeah, that which needs to be streamlined, and that's what's costing America the most amount of money is uh, like treating people like shit so that they'll uh, not come here. Like that. Let's let's not like look at this any other way than basically. I I don't in America it's the same, but like I'm going to be using Australia as an example here. What we do is when someone comes here. Um, as an asylum seeker, we put them in camps. We put them in concentration camps in other countries in conditions so awful that other people will not try and take make the journey here. That's the point. That's not a side effect. The point of our Australian asylum seeker policies is to treat them like shit until they don't want to come anymore. That's the, that's what, that is the bipartisan system. And it's the same in America. Treat them like shit so people won't want to come here. How fucked is that? That's just fucked. No matter which way you look at it, it's just fucked. No, it, 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 it like, yeah. Are you, really are you so saying that we everybody... should do away with that system? And if you are saying that, then it would require members of Congress to pass legislation that reforms our immigration system. But I mean, I think you'll agree with the statement, members of Congress have no interest in passing any legislation or engaging in any immigration reform. We have companies and businesses that are exploiting undocumented immigrants for cheap labor and they have no I, recourse, I that exists. Uh, but they love, they love the theater. For, Members of Congress right. love the, the theater. For the record, I, I spit on corporations. They, they, are, <laughs> they are woke and, and they are abusive of, of labor at the same time. So you're not gonna get any defense from me or any conservative of big corporations. I can't stand them. The fact that Disney will not even allow people at, the, at, at their amusement parks to say boys and girls anymore. Okay, I just wanna point out that we went from like uh, treating asylum seekers uh, badly enough that they, that, that they, you know, are wanting that, that four-year-olds want to try and kill them, themselves, um, making children suicidal. Um, where, like, uh, you know, people in detention for up to ten, to, up to a decade, um, you know, just making the lives of people's fucking hell just for wanting to come here for a better life. To not being able to say boy and girl anymore. Like, this is the, the, oh, done randomly, um, concentration camps, asylum seeker, like, that's, 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 that's the Australian, uh, that's the Australian asylum seeker policy. You separate them from your, their parents, you put them into awful, uh, awful situations where each person has maybe, uh, two, two meet, two square meters of space to themselves. Um, you put them in countries which are homophobic and um, highly conservatives. Um, and yeah, the point of it is to treat them like shit. The point of it isn't, that's not a side effect of the policy. That is the policy, to treat them like shit. Like, that treat them badly enough that it's an example to others coming here. That's the point of the system. It's fucked. It's so fucked up. And it's justified by ghouls like this motherfucker calling them illegal, as if they deserve to be, to have their, the rest of their lives, like, even if they get into the country or escape, they're going to deal with, the, have to deal that, with that trauma for the rest of their fucking lives. Like, you, you, you've ruined these people's lives just because they want to fucking escape. Yeah, it's pretty fucked.
Oh yeah, it came from British as well. Um, like the Boers, arguably as well. The concentration, if we're talking about the, the word concentration camp. Um, but yeah, uh, ghoul. Um, a goon, goon is a drink in Australia. Boxed wine. But yeah. Gives you an idea of how sick they have become in the but world. Yeah. Like, like, so, so I just want to double down on this. We're talking about policies which are so bad that they make four-year-olds want to kill themselves. And he's going on to saying Disney won't let people say boys and girls. Boys and girls. Oh, my freedoms. I can't go to the cinemas without having a vaccine passport anymore. Oh, it's like the comparison is just like, fucking hell. Den like, these people live in different fucking worlds. This, of this non-binary evil, and that I do believe is evil, to tell little children <laughs> you're, you, you don't know if you're a boy or a girl until you decide. Do you think that's healthy? I think it's unhealthy think it's to spend the amount of time you girl. spend in judging decisions that parents make about their own children. I think it's none hey! of your business. Schools I don't think it's anyone's and business. And schools are not doing not anything close to what the right wing is describing. Okay. I mean, it is amazing because you talk about Alan Dershowitz, yes. who had written a column Fucking in the New York it. Times about how it should be okay to have sex with underage girls, okay? Uh, you don't call him a groomer. but. Did I do a goon stream? You'll call our educators who have done nothing wrong, just want to create an environment that's welcoming to all students. You'll call them groomers, what? you'll defame them I as some sort of sexual predators, groomers. and it's I unacceptable. Sick, just being clear groomers. about that. I never call them groomers, you have the wrong guy. But a teacher that has the kids in, in uh, kindergarten attend a drag queen story hour to see a guy in a Oh, wait, wait, what is he talking about? When did this happen? When did a kindergarten take- What the fuck is- he's, he's mixing up his fucking stories. Wait, okay, can someone link me the, the proof that um, a kindergarten teacher took their students to a uh, drag drag queen story hour? I think like the- she- I think he's- he, he's like- he's mixing up like all of the fucking um, right wing stories, like rolling them up into one fucking piece. Like, this is hilarious in a dress uh, dancing erotically in front of them those what? teachers what what yeah he's mixing everything they they he's mixing up all of these things like these are this is three different um news sto news stories that they've been using yeah like this this is three different news story or stories that uh, they're using they're talking he's putting the whole kindergarten um age uh, students learning about what non binary is uh, which is based and red and and red pilled, um, and he's mixing up the drag tire drag queen story hour, which is a thing that uh, public libraries have done, and he's mixing up the um, the drag show in which like there was just people doing dance performance performances that were no more erotic than what you would see at Disney on Ice. Or like, uh, what's a what's a weird American thing? Um, what's that American fucking weird beauty pageant? Like child beauty pageants? Like no more erotic than that shit. He, th those are three different things that have happened, but he's rolling them up into one. This is what they do. This is their their, their brain is just a puddle a puddle of fucking like talking points that they mix up. Oh my gosh. Are, are what we would have called 10 years ago sick. They are depriving children of sexual innocence. And if that's not a sin on the left, the left needs to do a lot of- uh, there, the, none, Those three things that I just mentioned there, the kindergarten, kindergartners learning about gender, um, uh, drag time story hour, and uh, the drag show for the family, uh, not, none of those things. Not, not one of those things had anything to do with sex. Not, nothing about sexualizing kids. 
And if you see sexuality in those things, that is a you problem and not them. You fucking freak. Think the old man. Introspection. I would love for you to apply standards like that to the former. I don't know how I feel about it. I think that they are very exploitative, but there is an argument to be had for uh, parents um, spending time with their kids on for something they both enjoy. So, like, I, I think that the commercialization of it is probably the capital. Having a capitalist, um, having it like be under capitalism brings in those uh, problems of exploitation from the get go. So, like, without that, I think they they. they Fine, I don't really care about him. President of the United States, who you supported, who you endorsed, you have completely minimized some of the scandals he that he was involved in, including play, paying hush money to uh, adult entertainers uh, he had cheated on what his pregnant wife with. with. I'm bringing that up because what? you have this adult? weird standard when it what comes to our educators, to but no standards when it comes to a person who leads the country, who children look to okay. as a role model but anyway uh we okay. only have a few I, more I, minutes uh, left no no no, no. If you throw out a perfect point, me perfect like that's the perfect response like just call out the hypocrisy he basically just made up his argument out of no out of a no nowhere he's nothing but he all he does is make straw men that's all he's done this entire time and all and 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 it's just like talked over his bullshit. I love it. This is perfect. Okay, go ahead. We're running out nonsense. of time. We have a hard okay? out. So go ahead. When I was a child, my father didn't say to me, "I want you to look to Lyndon Johnson as a role model." This notion that the president's private life, John F. Kennedy had orgies at the White House. Okay, do you speak about that? I don't care about president's yes. private lives. Yes, I, I'm. I am damn sure that I could probably find a clip of Anna Kasparian criticizing Bill Clinton. What, what are you talking about, Dennis Prager? This is fucking hilarious. You do. I care about sexualizing children. You don't. Like, people hate... People on the left hate Bill Clinton. What are you fucking talking about? What the fuck? And, and JFK. Like, who gives a fuck? Who gives a fuck? Like, what's wrong with orgy? What's wrong with them having orgies? Like, as long as it's, like, consensual. Yes, look to JFK for having consensual sex. I don't know. I care about... Fighting back against lies regarding educators sexualizing children, that that's, is not happening, not but you guys do love to defame it. Yeah, I think you're right, Happy Puritan. That's why I'm like iffy about it. I don't know, like, I, 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 I would have to see, I would have to do a deep dive into it and see, like, what the actual um, material reality is around uh, beauty pageants. Like, it, there's a lot of different things there. There's so much in it that need that that is really hard to sort through. Educators who are already underpaid, undervalued, and should be treated True. a lot better in this country. So I would love to uh, continue this conversation. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. Okay, um, I'd, I'd love to invite you to our members only bonus episode if you're willing to stay for another 30 minutes. I don't know if you're open to that. Okay. Yeah, I am. Fantastic. Okay, great. Thanks for watching The Young Turks. Really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. Oh, so those wow. Are fun. Oh, you also look get at these emojis. Playback of our uh, exclusive member only sorry. shows and specials right after they air. So, all of that, all you got to do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank Why you. Why does he sound drunk? But anyway, I need to take another quick break. Um, more at 11. Word J Word JFK's orgies consensual. More at 11. Um, I need to take another quick break. Quick break because my my tiny lady bladder is 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 insane today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Um, but uh, when we get back, more. Uh, what is it? What is it? Is this is this gonna fucking Oh fuck no! Wait. All right, so this is. Wait, that's not his normal face. Now I'm confused. Wait, I. Uh. Yep. There we go. <laughs> Oh, 
Sorry, I just 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 needed that. Also, um, my my I I got content claimed on um my first the first uploader I was gonna go go with. Oh, folding ideas. Oh fuck yes. Um, because of the because of the um uh John Oliver thing that I um reacted to, so I don't know how to get around that. But yeah, don't go anywhere or do either way. I will be back after the short break. Don't touch that dial!
And we're back. I've got my, I've got some food. So before we look at that, I definitely, I'll, I'll watch. We'll watch the alt right playback tomorrow. I reckon that'll be a good idea. Oh my gosh, not that. Um, they want to exterminate trans people. Well, yeah, no shit. Damn. Wait, what the fuck? Yeah. I personally think it, Lizzo went too far when she used the bones of James Madison to summon his spirit and enslave it. To play a I, drum? I, Wait, what? I, I know they to pay, yeah, to play background beat for her for her uh, concert. I okay, okay. Can somebody please uh, give me a quick summary of who the fuck Lizzo is? Because I keep on hearing about this Lizzo person, but it hasn't infected um, Australia. Like, it seems to have infected... Uh, America at the moment. All I know is that um, uh, conservatives are fucking okay. I I ha, every time I know that Happy Puritan is around. So like Happy Puritan, you know what I mean when I say conservatives. Okay, we don't need to go into this song and dance every time. But like conservatives are losing their fucking heads. I personally thought that went a bridge too far, but you know, I could see how some would, you know, think it was not far enough. I mean, it is unfortunate that the ghost of Thomas Jefferson had to be her backup dancer, but um, for the most part, I I I thought it was oh. cool that you got to play an old flute. Um, but the for people that may not understand what we're talking about, Lizzo, the singer, uh, also a, a flautist, flutist, mm -hmm. flautist, yes. either, either or is, is acceptable. I guess she plays the flute. She's she a plays classically the flute. trained flute player. She's not someone who just like picked it up and blew in it to be funny. She actually can play the flute, do. and she <laughs> right? and she actually like which is in, in, like encompasses that in some of her songs. That would have been fine right. too. But like she actually like legit plays it and was like quite respectful about like what it meant to play this old ass flute. Well, yes. So, so like we'll play two clips here. One is a uh, Lizzo on stage, which is the one that the conservatives are freaking out about. Um, okay. But let's play this first clip where she's at the um, uh, was the Library of Congress. Right. Um, right. Who's James Madison then? Ah! A war criminal. And at, to be clear, flute this flute vault. was James Madison's flute, um, so that's why it's older. Yeah. And the famous flute that we oh, all have definitely- Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Sorry, I, I saw American president and assumed. ...heard about and know all about mm -hmm. before Lizzo played it. We definitely all knew about this flute, which yes. is why it's such a big deal. Which is why we all know the story about it behind it. So, uh, uh, Emma or Binder, you can go ahead first and just tell us all the story behind the flute that we all know. I mean... It's carved from the, his femur bone. And, <laughs> and when in, com in combination with, net with the necromantic arts, it can be used to summon his spirit to fight for you in combat. The funny thing is, he also would play this flute himself. So, I mean, he yeah. somehow... How 
while alive, had it carved out of his femur bone and then he used it to play shows. That's the that's, that's the power. That's the power of it. To be fair, you can't just give it to. Live. To be fair, that would be possible in Sam Raimi's universe, like if, within the Evil Dead universe. That would be that would be possible. So this guy named Claude obviously. Laurent uh, was making flutes. He made twenty of these uh, flutes in uh, Paris back in eighteen oh six. So, you know. All right. Oh, so, so it's some a bougie precious, shit. Uh, precious, if not to... mystical and magical, uh, piece of of uh, American history. Uh, Lizzo, who is a I'm probably going to get hate for this, but it's just a fucking flute. Oh, some French guy made 20 of them. So, okay, it's a bougie fucking flute. Who gives a fuck? It's rich person shit. Like, <clears throat> what history does it have other than someone, someone, a bougie person made it and a bougie person played it and a bougie person is playing it today? And bougie people are complaining about the bougie person playing it because they don't fit, like, they're not white or whatever. Black woman, and uh, that's why literally every right winger can't stop obsessing over her. That just really breaks their brains for some reason. Uh, and James she, Madison, to be clear, not not black. Just want to put that out there. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, here, here she is playing the flute, and uh, trigger warning for any people who are descendants of James Madison or uh, or fans of his. This was his precious, precious artifact, and I understand if you're a bit too offended to watch this. <laughs> flute vault. <laughs> Do we have sound? It's just a little low. Wow. <laughs> Oh my god, like a flute I mean, nerd. I'm not gonna throw shade at her for being excited, because, like, she's a flautist. Oh, oh fucking hell, wait. No. What are oh, you fuck? What the fuck is that? There's a fucking dot on the screen, which looks like it's on my screen. Fucking hell. It's a flautist. They are flautists. That's how you pronounce it. But like, okay, if I saw the very first Sega ever made, I would lose my shit. But it's the same shit. It's just a fucking gaming console. Like, it's a, just a fucking product at the end of the day. Nothing to, it's not, it's, it's something for her to enjoy as someone who enjoys that stuff. But it's nothing to get fucking angry over. What the fuck? I I oh, don't yeah. understand. Oh, These motherfuckers don't care about four-year-olds trying to kill themselves in in concentration camps, separated from their parents. But they care about this shit—a fucking flute played by a war criminal once. Jeez. Right? That's what I want to know. <laughs> oh, we'll see. <laughs> this was made in when? Fifteen what? Oh, and now the precious bassoon. <laughs> That's really cool. She life. might as well have just taken a shit on the Declaration <laughs> of Independence. Wait, what? <laughs> no, I, I mean, that would be based too, but gets like... an opportunity to do this himself. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. I, I gotta... Without the Declaration of Independence, there would never have been another democracy in the world, ever. You know, there was never, never a democracy before or after it. The de Declaration of Independence should be should be renamed the Declaration of Freedom. Oh yeah, brother! Oh, my
I say I didn't watch the clip because I thought actually like, the actual clip is completely irrelevant to whether or not it was proper for Lizzo to play mm-hmm. a flute she was offered to play. But I say that was quite beautiful. It was that? beautiful. Like, what's, yeah. Like she clearly did not just like pick it up and think it was a joke. She like legit played a nice little tune. Uh, yeah. Uh, for everyone who was there. I mean, but you know what she did in the reaction. You know what she did in the reaction. God bless America. Disgusting. So uh, now, to be fair, um, and I don't think this makes it any better, but that's not the clip that all these people are, uh, are reacting to. It's uh, this one. I, was this at some sort of concert? Yeah, or? this was at this was at a DC concert where she was. That, that's that's what the Library of Congress video was leading up to. That she was going to play this at her show in DC on Tuesday. Uh, okay, gotcha. Quick break in a couple of minutes. Sure. Or right now. Does someone want? Does someone want to uh, redeem a snug break? Me, I've redeemed it. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm learning what Lizzo is, or Lizzo. who who Lizzo is. It's the newest contro- con- controversial figure. All right, quick snug break. I shall be right back. Don't go any- go anywhere or do either way. I will be out back after snogging my partner. Uh, it's nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one.
We're back. James Madison's soul will never rest. Hopefully not. Is that a corset? Oh, so okay, so she shaved her butt a little as she played it, um, yep. and I mean, I, to be fair, I would imagine that James Madison probably could not have foreseen his flute being used in this way. Uh, do I see this as an act of disrespect? Absolutely. No, oh, come on! Not. I think well, it's kind of cool. I know. Yeah. You think James Madison wouldn't have uh, sat there with his flute out, forcing an African American woman? into to shaking her ass for him you think you think that 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 the that white supremacist fuck wouldn't have done that already i'd say he's been there done that that this flute was made out of james madison's femur i think you could look at this as a little mocking james madison for likely being unable to shake his buttocks while he played his flute yeah, he he wishes <laughs> so let's just get to some of the reaction here um <laughs> So, uh, uh, ben, boy, Ben Shapiro, the Lizzo flute controversy is a perfect example of what I have termed the face tattoo phenomenon trademark. Thanks for trademarking that no one is ever going to use it. The phenomenon whereby somebody does something co something deliberately controversial in an attempt to draw attention and acts offended when you notice. Deliberately Shit. So, what you do all the time, Ben? It's not like she burned a flag, you fucking idiot. Yeah, I mean, she also she... didn't like break into the Library of Congress, steal the flute, and unveil it on the stage. She was handed it by, she was given the permission. In fact, it seems like they approached her to do it. It's not like she yeah. was like, looking for James Madison's flute and convinced them to do it. I mean, she took it on stage after they brought it to her and she played a few notes and nicely handed it back and talked about how cool it was. Yeah, I guarantee you, this is like the biggest moment for flutes in like decades like but, right i mean since like the the flute tune was used in like uh disney movies or as or anchorman a, maybe right oh, actually yes what? anchorman and then before that snow white but like i mean this tweet from matt walsh is really it epitomizes why they have a, a, a problem with Yeah. One that she's a black woman and one that she like is proud of herself and doesn't adhere to like the strict body standards that this like sicko Matt Walsh wants to apply to her. Lizzo was a morbidly obese weirdo in a thong. He was wearing a thong? around on stage while playing a priceless piece of American history. How did you know that? That he never knew about until this moment. Also, I don't give a flying shit if it's an honor for her. That's not the point at all. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Yeah. Why is it not? If, the, if, if they let Nicolas Cage steal the Constitution, I don't see why Lizzo <laughs> can't play the flute. You know, it, it is what it is. I will say, I don't know, like, that Ben Shapiro tweet definitely feels like projecting. Like, just, you know, that's like the entire online right-wing content creator, like, plan of attack. Like, say something that you know people deliberately, or rather, say something deliberately that you know people find distasteful. And then when people tell you that they find it distasteful, pretend like them telling you that is some kind of depression, some kind of oppression. Yeah. And right. um, I mean, to me, it's just like, honestly, they have no idea how to deal with like we saw this with their obsession with Megan the Stallion too. strong black female celebrities who like express themselves on stage. It just totally breaks their brains. They should outflute her. They should have to like, you know, and like the devil That's goes down saying. to Georgia and like the fiddle thing. He, the Ben Shapiro should outflout uh, Lizzo on stage. He can, they can <laughs> battling flutes. Supposedly a m m musician. Uh, we have another one here from Mel. Well, you know who's Tim also Poole a musician is Lizzo. Ben Shapiro. Ben That's Shapiro saying, wishes yeah. desperately that he could, he could be playing that flute right now. Why can't he, that be me? Yeah, it's um, envy. 
they are outright admitting that this was done as a purposeful act of degradation. Uh, that, uh, he's quoting uh, Ellen Mistel saying, if any of James Madison's descendants is offended by Lizzo, wants to try out the 200-year-old iron-collar white folks would affix to our ancestors who tried to escape James Madison clutches. <laughs> it's sure somebody at the National Museum of... Ab- that is a very good point. I don't, uh, know that, I don't know why that's about degradation. Ellen Mistel has some fire uh, takes, uh, though, I gotta say. Racial retribution against one of our founding fathers. Uh, oh, no. Um, and yet Yet I, racial retribution, racial like reminding people about slavery is racial retribution. And yet I still see some conservatives on here like lighten up everyone. I think it was kind of cool. That's funny that even their uh, crowd is like <laughs> uh, the response being is reminded of slavery is the same thing as being literally enslaved. If you are <laughs> Matt Walsh or Matt Walsh fan, again, it's, like, it's always these like this collapsing of like minor inconveniences as somebody who nost- has a nostalgic view of the way things would have been 50 years ago, who were, who again, were not there and definitely can't speak to it directly you know trying to conflate like you know people reminding us that slavery existed is the same thing as literally being a slave this one is probably one of the crazier ones this is from uh pedro el gonzalez of chronicles magazine the thing that is obvious but people don't want to say that this is about humiliating white people about desecrating american history and heritage humiliating that's white what you people. do when you're a conqueror it's about the time lizzo is a conquer is a conqueror for playing a flute yes i mean again like, this is all just we, like we projection this Right. This is how yeah. like pe- right wing right wingers or people who have a right wing view of the world conceptualize everything as an act of domination. They're not only is their freedom contingent on them dominating people like Lizzo, you know, people who are black, people who are women, people who are, you know, in their minds, obese, I guess. Uh, it, it, it relies on that, but also their ability to demand that certain cultural like things just be for them, like the flute or like yeah. a particular flute. Mark, and, they, Mark. and because people, I would say, because people like don't respect that because they're not suffering from the same neuroses as they think, are. They yeah. just think of like, oh no, no, Lizzo is this is what the this was Lizzo's plan a, t- a planned attack on white people. It's like I don't know about Lizzo's planned attack planned on white attack. people. Uh, that seems unlikely because I you know I don't know her demographics, but I think a lot of white people like her music. That, you know, I mean, she's very I mean, mainstream it, popular. <laughs> Yeah, yeah and here, here's the thing too like we could talk about all these online discussions that arose out of this but like they're focused on lizzo and the meaning behind it that she apparently uh, the hidden message she had as far as i've seen every talk every discussion she's had about it completely devoid and she's well she's more than within her right obviously to talk about it okay. but she hasn't said anything about any sort of politics just oh cool this is an old flute belonging to uh, a founding father and i get to play it uh that's cool I mean, they're they're projecting all this stuff and putting it onto her when she has said nothing at all except old historical flute. Cool, I got to play it. Yeah, imagine if she, imagine if she was like uh, on stage being like, "This is for all the slaves." Yeah, like, yeah. I'm playing, I'm playing, the, I'm playing James Madison's flute for the slaves. Like, <laughs> like. She's not saying any of that. She's literally, oh, I was in the Library of she Congress. Didn't have to, Bradley. She's, just like, yeah. she's like a band nerd. Yeah, you're right. She didn't have to. It was, it was implicit. It was implicit. <laughs> it was implicit when she was twerking with the flute, what she was doing. It was, it was reparative. <laughs> You know, obviously half of it is like them lying to their fans, like causing them to like conspiratorially look for patterns that don't exist. But it is true that right wingers, because, again, fascism and the kind of like right wing talking points they promote are generally unpopular when just stated out loud. They're always speaking in code. They're always leaving like subtle hints that they Mm -hmm. think should like indicate that they're trying to like cuck or dominate somebody. And so they've just brain poisoned themselves that they can't interpret the world any other way besides that. Well, that's when we'll we'll do the Marjorie Taylor Greene does that in her uh, in in that that ad. Maybe we'll do that as our last clip. But uh, I'm like want to read some IMs and get to some calls really quickly. Mark Monkey writes in though, can't believe Lizzo stuck James Madison's flute in her vagina and flip <laughs> flipped off Old Glory. <laughs> Disrespectful. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I would have been all for that. I mean, Me too. That would have been pretty cool. <laughs> Moxie boosted Lizzo is the most important person to ever hold that flute. Um, true. Uh, Travis. They Finn probably Pitts- want to auction it now. They're gonna like try to display it now because Lizzo held it. Well, I mean, we all uh, we, right. It would, probably would make it more money. Um, 
It's the Lizzo flute now. Exactly. The distinguished gentleman, cool hip hop black woman, draws bigger crowds than crusty old white men. The conservatives mauled and pissed their pants. Um, the thing about her, is she's like kind of a poppy too, right? Like she's just completely unoffensive. Just seems, oh yeah, she's totally like mainstream. <laughs> yeah, and 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 like as I mentioned, I think she's just like a band nerd and loves the flute and things like that. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing. She's not hardcore, and I don't mean that in any negative way. She's just ma a mainstream kind of pop singer, which is actually it does not to interrupt the messed up thing because she appreciates oh, she the flute like on an artistic and musical level, and so she's able to actually art appreciate it like the way it's supposed to be appreciated and they just they can't because they, they you know it's it that most of them are only giving off the pretenses of culture because they like both like fetishize anti-intellectualism but view themselves as being like the pinnacle of like the cultural west the world culture via the western paradigm but like yeah they, they don't know shit about flutes like you yeah. know she was super excited to be in that flute room the flute vault like that's probably why they showed it to her and like if anyone should be dealing with the flute is her like i don't give a shit about flutes i didn't care enough to watch the video before you just showed it to <laughs> me so either, like, right? better better for her to hold it than like me well i now know who lizzo is and uh i still don't really care i suppose let us continue the game Volume a little bit. Ugh. Oh shit, there's, there's more of them. Hey, bodies. I don't think I was supposed to- I think I was supposed to be sneaking quietly. Gefangene, denken Sie an Ihre Angehörigen. Lassen Sie sie nicht im Stich. Like a glove. Have to do this. I think I killed everything that I was supposed to be sneaking around. Hello, there's a big arrow that tell, telling me where to go. Alright. I gotta go into the arrow. Oh, 
Um, what? Okay. Oh, hey. Australian. What's an Australian? Oh, what the fuck? Okay, so blocking doesn't help. What the fuck? Okay, so like, I'm, I'm this guy just kills me then. All right, cool. Can't even throw shit. Poo with nuts in it. <sighs> It was a debate of actual justice warrior versus uh, actual justice warrior. Oh, for fuck's sake, that guy. That guy has no idea about, like, actual shit. Wait, which link? I think it's probably lost now. Oh shit, I forgot about that. Ah! Fuck you! Yeah, relink it. I'll just have it on in the background, maybe. Thanks. Okay, um, so I... Actual debate... Oh, it's a debate review. Uh, so it's someone reacting to it. Where is the first one? There we go. Found it. Average are less likely to use condoms, so they're more likely to have unplanned pregnancies. Like again, there's a bunch of things that are that are, that are leading to this, and this is a long term trend. It's been happening, I think, since the '60s. Mm -hmm. But it, and there's no reason why they they would be doing that as opposed to the white population. Like, why, why are black people in particular not using condoms? But am I supposed to be an expert on everything like involved involved <laughs> in their culture? Because they don't use condoms. Their culture. <laughs> so that's that's within someone's culture to, to not use condoms. Okay, cool. All right, cool. That's that's. I can even watch the full footage online. Also, that footage was not hidden. That movie came out like two years after Michael Brown, after the DOJ completed their investigation. 
according to public records, the Ferguson police turned over that video footage to the Brown family because they were suing the city of Ferguson. So that's a huge nothing. Okay. So, so just my first question being is that do you think this was justified? In, in, do you think his murder was entirely justified based on your evidence? What you he said? wasn't murdered. So he wasn't murdered. Okay. So do, do you think him being killed was justified based on what you saw? You mean when he reached for the gun? No, just in general. Assault do you, do you think like the actions of everything that went down? Do you, do you think it was justified? Officer? You mean when he reached for the gun? Do I think it's justified to shoot somebody who's reaching for your weapon? Who so, assaults you? Okay. So is this, is this like? This, this is question. not a trick. This is not a trick question, my dude. I'm not it's trying to like. This is, it's not a gotcha. So uh, at what point? At what point is it acceptable to shoot a suspect? Uh, my understanding is if your life is threatened, correct? So if somebody reaches for a gun, you can't shoot the suspect. Well, uh, well, hold on. If they reach for the gun, or do they have access to it? Are they holding the gun? Are they about to shoot you with the gun, his or am hand, I just? If, if my hand, hand is was, going in a motion his towards hand you, was within, his hand was within inches of the gun. That's why he not only had GSR on his, but he had thermal change, which means he was burned. Wait, so, so by that. By that um, logic, should we like uh, shoot police on sight because their their hands are often right their hands are right next to their gun? I feel feel threatened. Like, what the fuck are you even talking about? What the fuck? By the flash of the muzzle. All right. So, so the question, close, the question so remains: is, is so if he's not even touching the gun, so he doesn't even have his gun in his hand, you're justified in shooting him because your hand is motioning towards it. it. Just said he could easily have had his hand on it, the, the, but he could have been an inch away from it. So. That's Again. what the thermal change indicates. Right, right. But you're still not answering my question. Like, this is, a, you don't have to be slippery about this. I'm, this is not a gotcha. I, I'm just slippery, except for you. I'm asking you a very simple question right out of the gates. Is, is, is it justified in killing someone? Yes, it was a justified shooting. Okay, that's what, that's what I want to know, if you, if you think that was justified. So, in, in your experience, can you get access to a cop's gun just by grabbing onto it? Like, can I just unclip something and put my hand in and pull the gun out? Is that how that works? Well, he was drawing his weapon because Michael Brown initially assaulted him. And he pushed the car closed. His palm print is on Not the Not answering my question. Can you gain access to a cop's gun? Again, just to... Yes, if you grab the gun out of his hand, which is what Michael Brown was attempting to do. So he already had the gun in his hand. He'd already pulled his gun out. He pulled it out at his belt. So he had just pulled it out, and Michael Brown was grabbing the Okay, so right off the gate, we have something different here. And that's a little bit stranger. If you've got your gun pulled out, you're starting to get, like, now there's a form of intimidation, right? Like, I, I am suddenly threatened. This guy is pulling his gun out. He's about to shoot me, possibly. No, the intimidation is pushing the door closed and then decking the cop in the face right, while well, he's seated in his car. Wait, would I ever debate Vosh on um, insert topic or do I think it's not worth my time? I mean, like, of course I'd uh, like to debate Vosh. Like, I, they, I, that clout would be amazing. <laughs> Like, um, I don't know, like, what, uh, praxis it would be, but, like, um, it would have to be, it would, pro it would have to be on some sort of topic, but, like, why, why would they, why would he even, like, pay attention to someone like me, though? It's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, happy girlfriend, happy girlfriend, happy girlfriend! Your girlfriend is happy. Give me some snacks. All right. Sorry, I'm, I'm, well, I okay, think so I've... To use, and, you Officer Darren, and Officer Darren Wilson said specifically why he reached for his gun instead of a less lethal weapon, and that was because seated in his car, his less lethal weapons were not available to him, which is, again, in the report that you didn't bother to read. So, so at that moment, he was justified in killing him, but he doesn't kill him at that point, and then he gets away, and then after he had run away... He charges back at him. He doesn't get away. Wilson pursued him. He was within two feet. He was a little over two feet charging at Wilson before he died. There's also audio of the shooting that, that shows that Wilson was, like, staring in the shots that he fired at Brown. There's multiple witnesses that say that... What was this on to begin with? No, but Sam Blips. Sam, um, to answer your question a bit better, I'm happy to debate anyone on any platform, as long as it doesn't break t terms of service, and obviously it can be monetized. I can have stream a copy of it myself. Um... I'm a very small creator, and um, yeah, like any clout that I can get is fucking brilliant, because that's my job. Um, if I was um, the size of a creator, content creator such as Hassan or Vosh, um, I would be very different on who I spoke to and who I associated with. So basically, it would change depending on the circumstance. Right now, yeah, fuck yeah. I don't know what it is, what we'd talk about, but sure, why not? 
Fuck her. You know? I'm down. Why wouldn't I? That can, like, only be good for me. Yeah? Come on on. Come on in. Debate me. On something. He was only firing at Brown when Brown was closing the gap between them. So didn't, so didn't he strike him? To get, is he supposed to get mauled by Michael Brown and, like, this guy that already reached... Also, does anyone know the context of what they're talking about right now? Because there are... Um... Um, there are a lot of, uh, Michael Brown, Michael Brown, Michael Brown. Uh, da, 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 on August 9th, 2014, when was this? 2020, six years, jeez. Uh, Ferguson, ah, oh, right, the Ferguson, yep, okay, Michael Brown. Fucking hell, the fact that I don't even know his name is fucking ridiculous. Um, okay. Da, 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 da. Shot and killed by Darren Wilson, Ferguson, Missouri, and obviously that sparked the Ferguson riots. Hands up, don't shoot. Yep. Okay. Yep. That was the guy that was convicted after, I believe, 12 witnesses. Um, testimonies were thrown out. And the one white witness, uh, witness's testimony, um, was allowed him. So, yeah. That, that, that's, that's what that's about. So, yeah. No, I remember. I just forgot the name. Like a piece of shit. For his gun before? So, well, again, I mean, this is an 18-year-old kid. I, I don't think he would be more Michael Brown is bigger than Darren Wilson. Are you kidding me? 18-year-old is an adult. Don't infantilize him. <laughs> I thought that 21 was just an adult in America, but are you guys weird with ages? <laughs> Do you become adults twice? So, okay, so in that situation, he turns around, uh, and that at that point, he's justified in shooting him uh, multiple no, times. Because he, 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 he struck him right six times, right? Or eight times. He turns around and... Okay, um, I just want to, like, knock out this... Can we stop um, talking about how many times people sh the police shoot uh, people? The police are trained to empty their clip. They are trained to shoot center of mass. I know it's very tempting to say, "Oh, if I was the cop, I wouldn't have. Uh, I would have shot him in the leg or something like that." You are trained not to do that. As part of your training, you are trained to shoot center of mass and empty your clip. That's it. Once you start shooting, you don't stop until you empty your clip. That, that's, that's how police are trained. So, you just need to understand that. I will say, ACAB, 1312, as many times as you like, but don't fuck around with an asshole with a gun. Do what you're told and come back later with legal help. That's the best you can do. Don't fucking be an idiot. Do what you're told, and you might survive. That's that. If you don't do what you're told, they'll fucking shoot you. That's it. Don't fuck around. Fuck around and find out. He runs at him. He turns around and runs at him. Twenty one feet to close the gap, mm -hmm. and gets with and gets a little over two feet. That's in the Department of Justice report. Mm -hmm. That's the issue is that um. According to um, the majority of witnesses, before their testimony got thrown out, he was unarmed and had his hands up. That's it. Shooting someone in the leg doesn't make a suspect any less dangerous. Hoser, I do not know enough about guns and shooting to make a informed opinion. To voice an informed opinion about that issue. All I know is what will happen and how to avoid that from happening. I know it sucks. You shouldn't have to comply all the time. Sometimes it's fucking bullshit. And sucking it up is one of might be one of the hardest things you do in your life, but you'll survive. At the very least, you'll fucking survive.
Okay, so, but at that point, he was justified in getting shot as many times as he did because it was to stop him. There was no other choice he could have done. Like, the cop could not have shot his legs. He couldn't have shot him to try and slow him down. He had to kill him dead on that point. No, no. Stop. Stop with these arguments. Stop wasting time with these arguments. That's my point. It's not right or wrong. I just have a problem with Lance bringing this up because you should not expect someone who is trained to do the opposite of what you're suggesting to do that. The thing has happened. You can talk about the policy afterwards and what police should be trained, but at this point, there's talking about the situation itself and what the police officer should have done. Maiming or uh, shooting a warning shot even was not an option for that officer at the time. They were trained wrong. Well, they were trained collect correctly, depending on what... Uh, <laughs> Well, what perspective you have on what correct and wrong are, um, from my perspective, definitely wrong. But then, in my from my perspective, police shouldn't exist in the in the state that it does right now, anyway. So, I'm sorry. This idea that you're shooting somebody's leg is ridiculous. Cops can't aim. Yes, you're taught to shoot center mass. That's like a made up lefty talking point. Like, oh, you just shoot him in the leg. You already shot him in the hand. Didn't do anything. Cops cannot shoot anywhere else. Then. But uh, how does they police training work? They, like. That seems a little bit unusual to me. Okay. You're trained to empty your clip and shoot center of mass. That is what you are trained to do. Okay, so in this fantasy world where right. you have marksmen as the police, mm -hmm. then maybe in this like high level marksman that under this is why we need to give cops pole arms. In anyone can use a fucking pole arm. Pressure in a situation like this when this guy's closing the gap rapidly on him, he's going to pinpoint accuracy shoot him in the leg, but make sure you don't hit him in the femoral artery in his leg, which is a giant artery and it causes him to bleed out anyway. But hit him in this precise way that's going to immobilize him when he has his adrenaline pumping and charging. Like I said, like I said, like even bringing up this point as a top, as a, as a topic, like even bringing it up is such a waste of time and just don't do it. Just don't. It's really not, it's really not worth it to make these kinds of arguments i'm serious it's not really it's really not worth it to make these kinds of arguments because at the end of the day it's like not going to come to anything yeah the audio sucks it keeps on going out i don't know what he's like recording on but this is actual justice warrior who like um streams on a potato or like makes things on a potato as far as i know which is a kind of bougie thing for me to say considering like how much i spend on my fucking machine like like a fucking idiot Oh, I've been looking at the forty, the RTX forty, for um, the forties, the RTX forties. Uh, I want one so bad. <laughs> I know that I'm not yet, but like, I want, I want it, I want it, I want it. <sighs> but yeah. Oh yeah, they're invisible. Woo. So these ones here, but yeah. You're talking. You're talking nonsense. They talk to shoot center well, mass. Well, I'm, I'm actually just. Ask, I'm actually they're asking not, you questions. Not, you're the one who's painting this strange taught, narrative to me. They're not even taught center mass. They're taught to shoot center mass, not to kill them, but because it's the biggest part of the body. Mm -hmm. like, um, so, so how does this work in other countries then? I mean, in, in other countries thing. where they don't always shoot center mass, for example. Yeah. No. Is, is, uh, no. 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 Lance. 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 You don't know this. You don't know this. Oh, this is cringe. Lance, don't. Bother, don't, uh, don't go into talking points that you don't really, uh, can't really, like, that you don't really get. That's, that's my, that's my issue. Like, don't try and make arguments about stuff that you might not really actually understand or know about the, um, like, how it works. Uh, it just makes me cringe. Oh, I can't buy it. Oh, well. Well, what am I going to do? Well, in, in other nations, countries, for example, they don't always shoot. Well, okay, so I'll give you I'll give you a quick example. In Canada, for example, uh, the cops aren't only, and at least to my knowledge, aren't only trained to shoot center mass. It's not like you can only shoot center mass, and that's it. There's no exceptions. And I'm not saying within the heat. I'm not trying to pull away from the fact that within the heat of the moment, of course, there's adrenaline thrown through your veins. You're scared, uh, terrified, whatever have you. That might make a decision making different. But is the training simply put that the only thing you can shoot at is the center of the body? That's it. Yes. It's not. Yes. It's not a rule. They teach you to shoot center mass because it's the biggest part of the body. Mm -hmm. It's yes. incredibly difficult to hit a moving target mm -hmm. with a pistol. Like, 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 you need to understand that, like, you need to forget about the fact that, Pete, that you can use a gun to stop someone from doing something without killing them. 
guns are made to kill people. Like, you know that, like, really cliche, weeby bullshit where it's just like, um, if you pull, if you, like, if, if you take out, pull out your sword, then you should be prepared to die. Like, that sort of bullshit, you know, that sort of, like, prin cringe ass fucking shit that, like that. Like, that's, that's really what it is. Yeah. It sucks. Ah, I need a solar shield. Dang it. Sorry. Too much noise. Yes. But yeah. Let's keep, keep on going. And to hit it in a precise way that you're aiming for, like, the leg or whatever. Like, the Canadian police aren't doing that. Mm -hmm. like, okay, no so... police department's doing that. So, 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 sorry. In, in your opinion, so that's that's when it was justified for him to be killed by the police because he he had a, an immediate when, threat when to his life. When he reaches for the when he assaults the officer, so from that from guy. that point he was he was justified in being murdered. No, if he had surrendered after that point, you don't have to kill him. Mm -hmm. But if he assaults the officer, reaches for the gun, then you're giving him commands to stop, and he's running at you. This person who already went for yeah. your gun. So I mean, this is this is this is the where it should have been doubled down on. Like this is six six years after it happened as well, right? This is six years after it happened, 2014, I believe. This is the Ferguson bullshit. Um, we know that... We know that none of that was true. Ah, fuck. I don't know. Um, yeah, I would have focused on something different. Like, what, like, at what point are you not allowed to shoot him? Like, at what point would the line be that it would be acceptable? When, when, when he's standing there with his hands up, like, saying, don't shoot. And you can make the argument that, um, that, uh, that's not how the court proceeding case went, and I can just say that, yeah, the, it sounds like, sounds like it was a fucking fishy-ass, um, court trial at the end of the day like it it, it should never it sh those those the testimony that supported um his uh that the hands up don't shoot like out overwhelmingly um supported the claims what oh. um not right now unfortunately yeah sorry I had to get petrol. Yeah. This is bullshit. This is more bullshit. This guy that's already went for your gun. That's mm -hmm. charging at you. Mm -hmm. The gun that you again had drawn out to shoot him with. Again, again, these are all lies. To deter him, it's the only weapon he could grab. He's pinned down in his car. I mean, <laughs> like, according according to the law, like, this is, this is, uh, the, um, the events that actually happened okay like that's according according to the what the judges found the judges found that this was the thing that uh, happened um but whether you believe that bullshit or not is uh you know purely up to you i for one call bullshit on all of that personally you can choose to uh, believe in the one testimony that uh, that uh, he's drawing these conclusions for, but I do not. I, I rely on the testimony that was thrown out for um, suspicious reason reasoning. Hmm. Yeah, the, the the weapon that he had pulled out to shoot him with before he had reached for the gun, right? Like he, like you said earlier, he couldn't grab it out of his holster, so the gun was already pulled. I mean, you could grab a gun out of somebody's holster. It's not impossible. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, okay, that's interesting. So, all, all this being said and done, uh, this you, you, this action, you think it was entirely justified. How does this, like, I guess, work in the greater scheme of the Black Lives Matter movement? Do you then feel that this, like you said well, in the video... the foundational case that they still mention, and Black Lives Matter is all about anecdotes, and a ton of the anecdotes put forward by Black Lives Matter fall apart under scrutiny. So, wait, sorry, are, are you proposing that every single uh, Black Lives... Did I say Lives, every single one, or did I say a ton of them? Uh, well, you said they're they're mostly anecdotes. I think that was the word you just used. Well, they are all. They're, it, they it was. It was the one about like, um, individual stories. That's the definition of an anecdote. Maybe. So okay. So something like George Floyd would that would that be what you would consider? That is an anecdote. Okay. Well, so, bad, do, you, do, you George, case, do you think George? Do you think George Floyd? Do you think George Floyd was murdered? 
I, I do think it's a murder. As, okay. for, as far as what I've seen right now, there could be further evidence maybe in the body cam footage that's released later that changes that opinion. But from what I've seen now, it's bare minimum the third degree murder charge. Okay, so is, is that the only one? What about the other cases? I mean, you would have to name a case. Uh, how about Brianna Taylor? Uh, Bri Brianna Taylor wasn't murdered, but it's a wrongful death. There's a distinction. Murder involves intent. And so, do you think then that the fact that the cops are indiscriminately killing black people on a, a, it is a indiscriminately killer? They were running a no-knock warrant, which is a bad policy that should have been changed. It's something that libertarians have been talking about for ten plus years, and they changed the law, mm -hmm. which is good. They should have changed it before, because in a no-knock warrant scenario, you come revved up looking for a fight, and somebody pulls a gun on so you, it's, uh, which is what Brianna Taylor's boyfriend did, and then you get into a shootout, and then you find out later that the no-knock warrant wasn't even like properly done, and the guy that they were looking for was already in custody. That's not the fault of the officers who responded to a gun and a shootout at the time. That's the fault of the judge for not closely examining the warrant and the fault of the legislature for allowing that policy to be applied so broadly. No knock warrant should be used in the absolute narrowest of scenarios. So what happened to Breonna Taylor was a wrongful death and the city of Louisville and the state of Pennsylvania should pay through the nose for that. They should change the policy, but it's not a murder. Murder involves an intent. They didn't show up intending to murder somebody. Okay. Oh, so, I, okay, I don't want to really get stuck into, like, the pedantry of this then. Why, why don't I, I put it a, a different way? So do you think then that the fact that the police kill uh, more black uh, Americans than they do white Americans uh, on average? They don't. They don't. They don't, they don't kill more black Americans than they do white Americans. Uh, what about by racial population? A per, as a percentage to their population? Yeah. Yes, it's disproportionately high. But so, you don't yeah. go based on the percentage of population. You go based on the percentage of criminality because that's more ridiculous. No. Okay, here we go. This is where we go where go 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 around. Um, he's putting the cart before the horse. He's um, going to claim that um, black people are more likely to commit cr crime, therefore they're more uh, arrested. That's just not the case. Um, there's multiple studies which have shown that, um, which have looked into these sort of things. Hmm. The order is pretty shit. But yeah. Um. It comes down to the the, the fact is, uh, without going into it too deeply, um, you are more likely to be um, convicted of the same crime of of crimes if you're black uh, than a white person, um, and that's based on um, the uh, like the that's based on the the um, fuck. My brain not working right now. Uh, that's based on. So, no, no, no. My brain just stopped stopped working for some fucking reason. So you're more like, likely to be convicted of a crime um, than a white person, even though white people uh, commit the same number of that particular crime. So the only variable there, you narrowed it down to the only difference being skin color. We know that there is systemic racism within the police department. No shit. The fact that we, like people expect it to be proven is pretty, pretty dumb, really. When it's just obviously true. It's just, yeah, bullshit. Any cash? Let's continue. It's going to interact with the police. Okay, so we're getting to the crux of it. So you think it's because black people are committing more crimes that they deserve to be killed more by the police? I didn't say they deserve. I said as a consequence of the fact that they commit more crimes. It's, 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 it's the reason it happens. There, well, of course it's the reason that it happens. Even though it's it's 2.5 to 2.7 times more more likely if you're a black American to be killed by the police. They represent, they first of all, they represent a significant portion of the murders or any other violent crime. Uh, they're more they're they're similarly similarly proportionally likely disproportionately to kill police officers in interactions so like what are we talking about well i think you know exactly like what we're talking about my dude i think the mask is the off you're, the you're spilling the 1350 shit right if now the if the behavior is different mm -hmm. then you can't be surprised that the output is different 
if the behavior is different. different. So that's so that's interesting. So what I told you before, by the way, that 2.5 times, that that is not the fact that they are committing those crimes 2.5 times more likely. Yeah, just in the interactions, in the interactions with the police. Times. Okay, let, well let's let's unpack that one in a second. All right. So the mask can stay on for two two moments here. But if it's 2.5 times more likely of them to be killed in the same interactions as the white people, so white folk and black. No, folk. No, that's not the case. It's 2.5 more times as a percentage of their population. It's yeah, not per stop. For for what reason are those people being killed by the police? You're saying now, are you saying that white people are being killed for different reasons than black people? No, they're being killed for the same reasons, and the overwhelming majority of police killings are justified. The reason police killings are higher in the United States than they are in Europe is because suspects in the United States are more likely to have guns or other weapons than they are in Europe. So again, the 2.5 to 2.7 times more likely if you're black than white to be killed by the police in the interaction. That you're just you just admitted that has that's nothing to do with what, their, that's compared to as compared the, to, to the, the population, population absolute, not, per, absolute, not per interaction. Absolutely. So in those interactions, we've got two different demographics. We've got white people and black people. In the in the case of the black people, they're being killed 2.5 to 2.7 times more often by the police. And you're saying this is for the same things compared to their population. Yes, exactly, my dude. Are you not reaching your head around this? So in that case, isn't there a problem? Don't We're you not, not see why like, would we look at population if crime is disproportionate? Well, okay, we can unpack that one afterwards. First off, if there are two, if if there are, if there are ten rapists in one house, and then in the next house there are five rapists, would you be surprised that ten people from that house with ten people? Well, would you be surprised that double the amount of rapists were arrested from the one with ten than the one with five? Why are there ten people in the say, same no, house or rapists? Not discrimination, but a difference in behavior. Okay, so uh, the fact that police, uh, sorry, the fact that black people in the United States, uh, I think they make up forty-four percent of the male prison population in the United States, and the male black population of the U.S. is six point five percent. Okay, so in that case, do you think the reason for that is because well, you're, you're minimizing the population? You know for a fact that the majority of crimes across all races are committed by males. So you're right, so just, well, that's the reason. That's right. No, that's, to no, make this... it seem like it's more unreasonable than it actually is when ninety percent of the violent crime across all demographics is committed by males. So you're already doing a standard crime denialist technique that I've dealt with. Before. Absolutely not. I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to deny this. We can do this with women population afterwards. The reason I'm using this is I just had these numbers right off the top of my head, so it's just easy to point this out that there's a disproportional amount of black male Americans in prison than there is via you know racial other population. And so, your numbers also wrong. It's 34 percent of the prison population, not okay. 44 or whatever nonsense number that you gave. Okay, sorry. That that was that's actually from the DOJ, I believe, Bureau of. But either way, I'll, I'll take. I'll take it. For, for, sure. For, you your, for your purposes, hey, for your purposes, let me take that. You're still letting me ask a question here. For your purposes, let's say they take up 34 percent, right? But they only make up 6.5 percent of the population. Do you think that's by virtue of the fact that, sorry no 13 percent is men and women so half of that is 6.5 so again 6.5 percent would be just men so again th is that because they are just disproportionately you know, committing the number, 90 of all the violent criminals are men right. you're just trying to cut the number down to 6.5 to imply it's even more of a disparity than no. it actually is, is I, 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 is <laughs> no 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 he's talking about the percentage of the pop population as a whole which is pretty close to like 50 50 when it comes to men and women uh, whoops! That's so weird. Uh, that's not how this works. So, again, I'm just trying to use this as a way to get you to answer a very simple question. Do you think the overwhelmingly high amount of black Americans who are in prison is because they are justifiably committing more crimes, and that's why they are disproportionately yeah, the in there represented? Amount. Yes. Yes. Yes! Okay! Boom! Nice! Alright, so now that the mask is off, is it something inherent? Is, is it happening because it is inherent to black what, people? What mask being off? Why are you trying to weasel? Are you denying that fact? Are you a crime denialist? Uh, no, I'm absolutely denying the fact that I think that is disproportional representation, and I think that has a lot to do with systemic racism, systemic poverty in the United States. Not because I think that black people so intrinsically not, commit more crimes. Like, I never said that. I said that they. But do. that, that, said, that is the implication, my dude. You have to understand what's it's going on here, right? It's what's happening. This is, yeah. So you're like, I'm just reporting you're facts. Right. I'm just calling it as I see it. It just so happens that these people seem to be committing all these crimes. Hey, there's no way of explaining. I'm not saying they're, they're using. This is a really confusing way of going about it. Basically, what Lance is doubling down on is the fact that black people make up a small amount of the population, yet they make a they make up a disproportionate amount of the, of the population of uh, in the prison. So gen gen pop. Well, like gen in the general population, very small amount. Um, prison population, very large amount, and that has to do with conviction. A lot of those things have to do with systemic prop issues, either from like an arrest point of view. We know that uh, police officers are more likely to pull to to um, pull people over if they're black. We know that um, uh, minority students are more like that's in schools where they have police officers are more likely to to be. Um, uh, like pulled up on behavior than other kids. We know that um, on even other levels, on levels such as um, um, from a court perspective, um, the, the 
judges are more likely to put harsher sentences on uh, black people. They're more likely to actually convict them of the, the sentencing. Like, all the way up, we're seeing these problems. And then we see the effect that um, imprisoning a crazy percentage of black men in prison affects their kids. And then we start looking into generational fucking damage from this shit. Like, this is where an argument is built from, right? I'm like Dennis Prager who says, I don't know, if I was going to do go with the with a Dennis Prager argument, instead of looking at those issues, I'd say that actual justice actual justice warrior just hates black people, and then and then build my argument from that. You know, build up build up that ad hominem, build up that straw man, attack that, and go. Whereas what Lance is trying to do is build from like a position of like look at the actual data and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. That it happens to do something, but they're inherently. Are you disputing that? Are you disputing that point? I am disputing that. Yes, I absolutely am disputing that. I'm, I'm saying that that is an overrepresentation. I do not think point that they have higher per capita crime. That sorry, black people commit higher per capita crime rates. Are you disputing the point that black people are convicted of higher capa per capita um, crime rates? Like that's that's the distinct difference. Like when it comes, we can look at drug crimes, and we look at um, white people who commit. Um, who who commit around about the same amount of uh, uh, drug-related offences as black people, but black people are more likely to be convicted of those sentences and charged harsher sentences. Like, that's just one of a lot of issues with this shit. That black people in the United States of America have higher per capita crime rates. Uh, I think they have higher per capita. I think these numbers are reported. I don't think that this demonstrates that black people are committing more crimes than white people just as by virtue of who they are. I think there's a handful of factors. This is a multifaceted issue. It's not as if all of a sudden uh, we have this enormous representation of black people in the prison population. That means that intrinsically black people are just going to be predisposed. I'm not saying anything about intrinsic. You're adding oh, then, okay, then how, how would you, just, how would you justify these numbers? I'm asking, how, you straight how, up if, I'm asking you straight up if you're denying the fact that the numbers are what they are. No, no, no. Oh, the numbers are real. Hey, hey, that's the same. You're saying the same thing that people who like talk about IQ rates talk about, right? Like, are you denying that these IQ rates are just publishing the results of findings from different demographics? This is another dodge, by the way. No, you, you are the master question. of the goalpost. How many times do you keep moving it? Holy shit. I'm asking you a straight up question. And I, answer, I answered you straight up. I said those numbers are real. I'm not denying the numbers. I, I agree the numbers are real. I, I don't think they're so, representational. I, I think there's a lot of the factors the numbers, that cause this happen. The numbers aren't saying what actual Justice Warrior, Justice Warrior thinks that they are. It is putting the cart before the horse instead of considering why the numbers are at at the, the instead of considering the fact that those numbers are not fixed they are not static they are not like just a um source of reality like black people commit more crime that is just the fact the static reality that's where actual justice warrior is coming from so he wouldn't have even like considered the idea that those numbers came from somewhere that there are reasons why black people are convicted of crimes more often. And the difference there is, there's a complete paradigm difference from Lance and Actual Justice Warrior that you just can't, that there's a gulf that can't be crossed. On one side, you have someone who believes in a fixed and static world where, like, where stuff like. And like systemic racism can't exist because that would mean that um, that we don't live in a fixed uh, universe. That things aren't always away. Black people don't always commit more crimes than white people, and that it comes from a whole range of other circumstantial details. Um, they don't exist on those assumptions they have a completely different world view they believe in objective truths instead of um collaboration and an attempt to make the world a better place the world can't be a better place to these people the world can never be a better place to these people at the end of the day the world is what it is and the only thing that they can do in their minds is to work hard in order to overcome them and since they seem to be overcoming their issues um, that must mean that they are morally superior to other people yeah 
like, by default, if, by their mindset, if they succeed, are succeeding, it means that their opinions are superior. Because if they were, if their opinions were wrong, then they wouldn't be successful. The issue is pointing out the fact that they are only successful because of things that they didn't work hard for takes away that feeling of achievement of working hard, which sucks because everyone works hard. Everyone works hard. That's just fucking life. Life is hard. No matter how much money you have, life is fucking hard and you work hard in your life. It just doesn't matter how hard you work. And it, it matters which gold-encrusted vagina you slid out of at the end of the day. That's the rule, not the exception. And that's why you can't actually get this across in debates with these people, like, because you are existing on a completely different worldview, two completely incompatible worldviews of people. Talking about thing, issues and ideas and thoughts and feelings which just do not connect in any mani meaningful way. So when you start talking about the numbers, the numbers literally mean different things to these two people. Right? And obviously I'm with Lance on his uh, interpretation of the data, but you, how are you supposed to um, p like convey that kind of information to someone who doesn't look at how the world works in the same world way as you. It's not going to happen. They're just going to reject everything you say because it doesn't make sense. It's like talking to a fucking alien. And I wish I knew a way of breaking through that, but I have never... I don't, I don't believe that there is a way of actually, of like, forcefully breaking through that sort of, um, mindset. Uh, that's why I'm, that's why I say I'm here to make, I, I'm not here to change minds, I'm here to make like minds and to entertain. Um, I want to do my job and uh, meet people who believe in the same things as I do so we can network and try and create a better community with or without the fuckheads who will try and stop that. Considering that there are higher per capita rates of violent crime, would you be surprised to see any demographic if they had higher per capita rates of violent crime to have higher representation in prison, which is the punishment for, and I know I'm keeping you waiting here, no, no, you're good. So would I would I be surprised to see if there's higher representation of uh, per capita crime if those people are also in crime? Sorry, are in prison as a result of the committing crimes? Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Is that surprising? Is it surprising? Yeah. Is that is that shocking that a demographic with higher rates of violent crime are in prison more? Uh, no. I, I don't know if this is the gotcha. You th I mean, like that would not be shocking. What's shocking is the fact that. What he just said is not the case. I think it is. It's. it's <laughs> that's my point. Is they commit higher violent crime overall, and that's why they're represented in prison more. They're overall. convicted of. Why? Why do they commit higher crime? There we go. Well, they do. I don't care why. Why wouldn't you care why? Wouldn't Wouldn't that help? Like, isn't your ultimate goal by saying the things you're saying out loud it. right now? That's it. <laughs> that's where the debate ends. For the rest of this debate, there will be no ideas shared. There will be no um, no consensus, no like figuring out of each other's point of view. You've reached the point where your world views are so diametrically opposed that uh, there can be no... Um, consensus on these issues that's just that's where it ends unfortunately yeah oh, that you want care. ultimately less people to commit more, commit more crimes right oh, yeah, I, would, I would want less people to commit i would want people to commit less crime for sure so why but, aren't you, you know, curious why that is techniques, it's not 
it's down to policing techniques. It's not an overall demographic thing. New York City has 2.1 million black residents, which is a compar po comparable population to the city of Chicago. And New York City has lower raw number of murders than the city of Chicago. So that's the distinction why? in the police. So why why is that? Why why are they doing that? Frozen? Did you leave? Are you still there? <laughs> Hello? Oh, he just muted himself. <laughs> right. <laughs> Are you still there, Sean? Oh, he left. He left. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Is that it? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> is that it? Sean, are you back? No. Hello? I saw he just reconnected. Sean? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, what happened? Uh, I disconnected probably. Oh, okay. Yeah, where where did you lose me? Uh, I I had asked why I, I was trying to get an answer as to why that is. Well, there's a difference in policing tactics. Which no, 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 no. no. Why, why, why does why, why does that that black people are, are committing all these crimes more more so than other demographics? Like I said, there's a difference in policing tactics. As I was saying before, my internet shorted out or whatever happened. It's not necessarily a race issue. It happens to be disproportionate among that population, but it's also not a one to one based on the population. Like I said, New York City has 2.1 million black residents. That is a comparable population to the entire city of Chicago. Chicago has more overall murders, more than double the overall murders that New York City has. So obviously it's not something that specifically, if you have this demographic of population in your city, then you're going to have this much more crime. It's not a one-to-one -one comparison. It's really a couple of cities in the United States that have these disproportionate outcomes. And that's down to differences in policing tactics. When, when you say city, demographics, is that, is that in brackets? Is it like demographics? Because is, is that what we're talking about? Like demographics of black people you ask, in those areas? You ask me, you ask, you, you ask me because you're trying to you're trying to weasel a way to call me a racist. Uh, yeah, I don't need to do that. You do that why, on your own, my you friend. Ask me why, you ask me why black people commit more crime in the United States of America. I'm explaining to you that it's not actually even that. It is this specific demographic, but only in certain metropolitan areas that are committing Why? more crimes. And I use the example to show that New York City has a large black population, but nowhere near the level of criminality that Chicago has with a significantly lower black population. Sure, like so, how, how, so how about I make it easier for both of us? Why don't we use the, the sum total of the United States? Because doesn't that make more sense? Because that way we can look at this all. Well, uh, well I'm right. trying to be more precise because it appears that you're not following the- Oh, no, I'm following well. you. I'm, we're, we're answering so each other's even questions. Chicago, even Chicago is only, even Chicago is not in the top 15 of per capita homicide rates, to use one example, St. Louis, Baltimore, and um, Detroit always flip around from the top three in recent years. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily a, it's not a race issue because black people who are the same, you know, like like the same, if you took gave them a 23 and me, they'd probably come back pretty much the same in different parts of the country act differently, just like a lot of demographics of people in different parts of the country act differently. So okay, so, 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 so if tactics. I'm right, so if I'm if I'm getting you right, then the over representation of black people as a whole uh, in the sum total of the United States happens to do with certain states such as Chicago, um, Chicago's uh, not sorry, a city. city, yeah, certain well, yeah, certain states, but Chicago the city, but in particularly that that one is is basically changing the stats. That's mm -hmm. how do I respond to people who say that race exists? Since why do black athletes win on average against non non black people? Um. Mm. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Um, I was just trying to remember. Um, so the reason why uh, black people um, tend to win more, um, I think that's a red herring argument, though, at the end of the day as well. I, se I seem to rem <coughs> remember the numbers not necessarily ref reflecting that idea in the, sa in the way that uh, people think it, it does. Um, but at the end of the day, that has nothing to do with being black. That just has to do with um, be living in certain regions. And that's it. Like, 
that that's basically when you look at people like athletes at their highest level um and uh, say oh a lot of these people seem to be black why that is that well i mean like they're not just black they they they're all they also come from very particular regions of uh, africa generally speaking their genes are like more correlated with um like as a regional thing than an actual skin color thing um and to people who disagree with me there then i challenge them to show me the gene that makes black people better at sports because that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of what you need to show me for me to actually agree with that but yeah um it's important to remember that when it comes to black people like there are so many different types of black people my gosh like um africa as a country has more um more uh like genetic variants than the rest of the world just just in just in black people you know what i mean so putting black people making black people like this one big monolith monolithic thing would say oh you know all black people are must be good at sport must be better at sports well that's just not true um like it'd be more sp more accurate to say hey people from kenya tend to be better at running or like people from this place be seem to be better at this this stuff like the skin color is added in as an identifier which might not necessarily be the best way of describing the um the uh uh what's the word oh yeah i need more of you which may not may or may not be the best way of like even describing the um phenomenon really or the demographic i don't know it's like saying all white people are, are good at handling cold weather and then like not realizing that people born in south africa kind of have different um, abilities to handle heat than people who were born in scotland you know like you can say that there is a <gasps> puddle slime puddle slime oh shit ah I need the puddle slime. Yes, yes, puddle slime. I needed you. I needed you. Their diet is water. Okay, I need more of them then. Come to me, puddle slime. What's this to us? Oh, hey, buddy. Do you like heat? Veg. Where are the puddle slimes gone? Are there gonna be more around here? Yeah, let's continue. What's happening here? Like well, Chicago, Chicago inflates the stats because it has a large population, but even their per capita homicide rates are not in the top 10 in the United States of America. The reason that people always point to Chicago is because the raw numbers are so bad because Chicago is the third largest city in the United States of America. They have <laughs> almost double the amount of murders in raw numbers than does New York City. Now, New York City used to have a similar per capita rate of homicide to the city of Chicago, but the NYPD introduced a ton of innovative policing tactics in the 90s and it continued throughout that brought down that homicide rate to or the raw number of homicides to near Okay, so when it comes to uh, what he's talking about is uh, the um, broken windows policies, but they are the correlation between the drop in homicide rates. Um, it correlates more effectively to um, the uh, uh, them stopping them not using uh, lead in car fumes, car emission emissions, um, causing a much uh, more placid. Um, population like you know lead in the air breeds violent people like that's that's how it works that's how that's how it works um oh damn it i'm out of room i need to make my way back to the island 
Um, yeah. But what I said is right. I think it's around 300 or even under 300 in recent years. So you can change this with the right policies implemented. So, okay, so so it's it's when you say difference in policing tactics, how does that change from the amount of crimes being committed, though? Because the crimes will be committed regardless of what the police are doing as response to the crimes, right? No. What are no. you talking about? Have you never heard of deterrence theory? Well, yeah, but I'm saying in this case, in, in these examples that we're talking about, right, people are still going to be committing crimes in, in both areas. Hello? Yeah, you're trying to drive that. Obviously, people are going to commit crimes, but you're trying to drive those numbers down. Well, I, no, New York City, <laughs> again, used to have the idea that the murders are going to happen anyway is absurd. New York City used to have 1,800 murders a year. Look it up. Some years they had 2,100. Now mm -hmm. they have under 300. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, of course, policing tactics impact crime. Well, that he's and he's attributing that to policing tactics, but um, like you need to be a you can talk about a correlation between the two things, but you need to actually show that the policing was the way reason why um, the crime rates dropped, where where there's like no actual like <sighs> there, there there isn't any evidence to support that theory. Whoa, what the fuck was that? Oh. Boots. So, okay, so well, I'm just trying to gather, like, I want, I want to have a feel for, for this worldview. So the, the more the more aggressive police tactics that have been employed in different areas, such as New York, they are directly responsible for, in your opinion, a lowering of crime. And and also... I didn't say the, I didn't say the more in aggressive uh, police tactics. They were smarter tactics smarter that tactics, were sure. specifically they were to New York aggressive. City. Mm -hmm. Like the NYPD is a pioneer of a system called ComStat, where they would map crime geographically and send their patrols based on where the most violent crime was happening. Mm -hmm. Like that's not aggressive. You're not just ramping up your resources just for the fuck of it. You're targeting the specific areas that are creating most of the problems in your city. Mm -hmm. So again, if, if if I was to talk about the overall uh, statistics in America and we talk about the overall prison population in America, that, that would be your justification. That I'm not even going to go into why that's a bad thing. Certain cities, and in your, your example, Chicago, is one of the reasons that disproportionately black people are appearing in uh, the prison system so much higher than other demographics. Oh, well, it's overall, they have higher rates of per capita crime. But if you want to go more specifically, um, certain cities have even higher per capita crime rates. But when and you again, say, Chicago's you, not you, even you in the, say that's Chicago's so not even clear. in the high 10th. <laughs> Is not is Chicago is not even in the hot, in the top fifteen of cities though. It's again people use that as an example because it's so large that it has bad looking raw numbers. St. Mm -hmm. Louis is significantly worse; their population is just lower. Mm -hmm. Detroit is significantly worse; their population is just lower. Baltimore mm -hmm. is significantly worse; their population is just lower. But it doesn't produce those crazy raw numbers that Chicago does. Mm -hmm. And so in Chicago, it happens to do with the fact that they are committing more crimes per capita. Oh yeah, that's obvious. Mm -hmm. And you like, and then my follow up being again the same question: Why is that? Um, I already said there's difference in policing tactics. No, 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 don't, just, don't, don't weasel out of this one. Why, why is that in that How specific am I weaseling case? Out of it? Because you're you're changing it. You're moving the goalpost again. How is it in that I'm specific not example? The in that specific example, are we comparing? Are we comparing Chicago to? Are we comparing Chicago to New York City? Or are we not comparing no. Chicago to New York City? I'm no, no, I'm just asking Chicago because people. you keep trying to move from like you know city to city on this. Uh, it's you know let's let's keep it very simple. I'm doing like, a what? compare and contrast. Right, and I'm not asking you to compare and contrast. That it's, one has it's... policies. One has policies that work and drive down crime. The others don't. Mm -hmm. But then why in that where they don't? Why is it that black people are disproportionately, in your opinion, committing more crimes? Because they are. They, they just are. I mean, you have what, like, you have lack of police presence in certain areas. Um, uh, hyped gang culture. Your fatherless households, like whatever you want to run through, mm -hmm. I, but they but are. Then my question again would be the same thing. Then why why does that again, not affect the not... white demographic of that same population the same way? Because they don't have the same they don't have the same issues as the black population in terms of fatherless households. It's significantly higher among black communities than it is among white. Oh my gosh, it's amazing how they weasel their way out of it. They weasel their way into specific things which don't even prove their point. Like quite literally, like everything that he said right now has been a, like, putting the cart before the horse. He's talking about fatherless uh, fatherless um, um, households. For one thing, uh, it's not because they don't have fathers that it's an issue. It's because of the income. It's about poverty and income and quality um, that causes most of the problems. Look it up. Um, it's also, why are those black parents not there? 
It couldn't be because a massively disproportionate amount of black men get imprisoned. That might have something to do with it. Communities. So it's it, the cause is fatherless households then? I mean, that is, a, that is a huge predictor of whether or not you will end up in poverty and whether or not you will end up involved in crime, yes. A male role model makes a huge difference. Especially since you're peak offending. Again, again, like, it's not about the male role model. Like, male role model idea is um, pseudoscientific. Like, there's no actual um, scientific uh, evidence to prove that, like, a masculine person in a household is a requirement. In fact, the best thing you can possibly have is a diversity of people. Like, the more people involved in a child's upbringing, the better. And the argument now is whether that improves the the flexibility of a child's mind to understand different points of views and to collaborate with different types of people, um, and or poverty and having access to resources. It's not about having a father. <laughs> They simplify it so much, and they don't even realize how they're proving their own, pr proving their uh, opponent's points for them. Years as are when you're a young man, age fourteen or fifteen to twenty-five. Could it have anything to do with maybe some of the fathers are incarcerated? What percentage of the population? Uh, what percentage of the black population do you think is incarcerated? Uh, off the top of my head, I'm not sure. I I, I know just the percentage of demographics within. Do you think it's, it's, you think it's seventy-two percent? Oh God, no! Absolutely not. That's the percentage of fatherless households. Okay. And why why is that? Why, why do you think? People are getting pregnant before they graduate high school. Uh, like a bunch of reasons. No, no, no. But why is that happening to black households? Why, why do black households have that high rate? I mean, you have the breakdown of the family. You have a bunch of different like factors. The breakdown we, of the family. No, explain where, that. Double down uh, on that. Women are incentivized to not marry the father of their kid. Black people, on average, are less likely to use condoms. You so they're more likely to have unplanned pregnancies. Like, again, there's a bunch of things that are that are, that are leading to this, and this is a long-term trend. It's been happening, I think, since the 60s. Mm -hmm. But, it, and there's no reason why they, they would be doing that as opposed to the white population. Like, why, why are black people in particular not using condoms? But am I supposed to be an expert on everything, like, involved, involved in their culture? Because they don't use condoms. And this is the point, like, the point, all he's brought up are the symptoms of problems, right? But he has not brought up a the actual cause of any of these problems. And that's what Lance is trying to double down to. But the problem is that for people like AJW, there doesn't need to be a cause because for them, it's an unchain all of those symptoms of the fucking cause are unchangeable laws of reality the objective truth all he can all they can see is the pro the problem the 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 um symptoms of major problems oh my gosh it's almost 11 30 shit i'll play the rest of this out that's just, that's just the thing black people don't use condoms not not everyone but disproportionately yes and that leads to more unplanned pregnancies which leads to more um which leads to less people being married by the time they have children well, I mean, yeah, I guess uh, <laughs> I guess I got no follow-up questions, my dude. That's I, I think I've learned quite a bit. Um, what do you want to do on Thursday? What do you want to? Should we set a topic up? Do you have a certain time that you want to do it? What's I mean, on? I'll do I'll do criminal justice. I can run okay. through these numbers where I can actually pull up all the charts if you're going to go full denialist on it. Um, sure. You know. Cool. So. Uh, all right, so we'll just talk, we'll talk on Twitter and we'll set it up. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. We'll talk then. Before we bombard you with all of our shameless links, we want you to bombard us. Do you have a worker co-op business or local union you'd like us to advertise at the end of our episode for free? So, if you'd like yours on your worker co-op, go down to wearesurfs.com. And while you're there, join the Discord, because it's filled with righteous guys, gals, and empals. Finally, come check us out on Twitch Live five days a week by going to twitch.tv slash the surf TV. Yeah. To our lords, Ricky Pilgrim, I'm Raft, Thomas Bone, Nine Tails Cosmic Fox, Hans Josephin, and Corpse Harvester. We bow weekly for your pleasure. To our Knights of the Round Table, Josh Mickelson, Dylan Byte, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, Todd Lajeunesse, Clement Chetskoff, Cooper Pilot, aka the Man with Large Balls, Political Puppy, Nick Davis, Ali May, and Alan R., we salute you. 
And to our many merchants and farmers, you have our undying loyalty. Yeah. Well. Well, that's going to be it for me today. Um, thank you for watching. Now, do I have a preference to the debate style styles like rest with chili? I like chili debate styles, but I don't really mind as long as it's fun and entertaining. Yeah, no, surfs is definitely more chill. I tend to, to like be more chill when I'm debating people, to be honest. But that's not really a choice. It's more just like what I do. When someone else is aggressive, it's fun to just stand back and let them like incriminate themselves. But yeah, I shall see you tomorrow. Thank you for watching, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye for now. Bye. 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 Wait, is it Friday today? Because in that case, I'll see you on Monday. Bye 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 bye.